It's uh, Wednesday, May 6, and I've got uh, 5.07 in the afternoon. Uh, we're going to start our Town of Sagerville Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, we're in the town office, so we don't have a flag to uh, pledge allegiance. Mm -hmm. And also, um, Jody is participating from home uh, with, uh, with our speakerphone. I think we're supposed to do with any, if we do have any votes, I think it's supposed to be a roll call vote if we have people okay. outside, so we'll just deal with that. So okay. we don't have any guests, so we should be, be good to start. Uh, I'll go to item two, uh, approval of the March 18th, 2020 select board meeting minutes. Okay, I don't have them, so in front of me. Uh, I, will, I will second, and uh, okay. we will vote. Dale and I both vote to approve those minutes. Um, the 2019 annual town meeting minutes, we can table that. I just think you probably want to look yeah. at it, Jody. Yeah. Dale and I signed it. Yeah. What do you think, Dale? Yeah, let's table. We'll, we'll all okay. okay. So we're going to table B of item two. And the only thing we changed was that last page, and you can come look at it sometime and sign it when, and then we'll, or we'll approve it next meeting. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the other warrants, we're only required to have two signatures now, and so we've got them, so we're good to go, but I'm going to read them. Okay. Uh, review of Treasurer's Warrants Payroll, 32, 33, Accounts Payable, 34. Make a motion to approve A and B as read. Any further discussion? None? Okay. Who's, who's going to be a second? You're going to be second, Mike? I will be second. Okay. Jody, how do you vote? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I I, I haven't seen them. Oh, okay. That's right. She didn't send all those. Yeah. So, um, do you can I just abstain just actually because you can't see them anyway, right? Yeah. No, it's, I think we're fine. Why with don't you votes. abstain and then come in and look at the warrants if you have to see if you have any questions? Okay. Now, I know I'm I'm so I don't want to hold up the warrant. Do you? Um, well, in the case of the warrants, if. Right. Think, we only need, need two people anyway. In fact, we don't even need a vote under these conditions. We can just sign them, which is hard or to believe. What we've been doing, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, so I, I, think those, them up either. I think those two items were fine. Okay, that's fine. Um, item four is, is basically our policy. Uh, people will not be invited to speak during the Board of Selectmen's meeting due to COVID-19 pandemic. Anyone wishing to address the board should send an email or letter to the town manager We'll go back to having an open session during the next phase of the governor's plan for reopening. That's just to put us on the record. Okay. Uh, as you, this this is being recorded. So, um, item five: old business, emergency procedures for the pandemic. One for the town office. Okay, we've had the town office closed and have been doing everything by phone or mail, except in rare instances, as of. May 1st, when the governor changed her policies, we decided to go, well, I decided that we would go to having appointments. Um, and this is working, let me just read the, the list I gave you. Town office procedures as of May 1st, 2020. The library and bathrooms are closed until such time as we open more fully to the public. The library will make their own decision, obviously, on that, but it's still somewhere down the road. Residents may make an appointment to conduct business with the town. Customers are encouraged to wear masks and come to appointments singly unless more than one signature is needed on a document. Some registrations require um, both people who are on them to sign. Um, customers are waited on at the new gate with a plexiglass shield. There is a bottle of hand sanitizer available for public use. Clerks have masks and gloves to wear while processing uh, transactions. After each appointment, the gate, the pennant, which is attached to the gate by a chain and the door are all disinfected. No one is allowed in without an appointment or at a time other than their appointed one. Um, staff disinfects the office every morning before work. Uh, we have san hand sanitizer. I didn't put that on there, but we have it out during the day out by the gate so that anybody who wants to use it. And that's the policy we are using. Um, we had a few blips the first day, but it seems to work fine. Hey. And as far as wearing masks uh, for the customers that come in, you're, you're saying it's... 
We're saying it's highly recommended. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we aren't we aren't saying if you don't wear one you can't come in. Okay. But we do have the plexiglass shield up. Oh, okay. And we're just Lorna and Sarah are very good about disinfecting things, so I think we're okay um, in that regard. Okay. The only thing that I got just mm -hmm. the library part of that. Mm -hmm. I would kind of I mean you it's well, kind of you guys' decision too. Yes. It's not just well, willy nilly they can decide to open them. Yeah. Well, if I don't unlock the door, well. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. You guys got to be safe as a work environment. Right. We can't just open the library up and then all of a sudden have that. And it wouldn't flow. be until at least um, June first when the governor's the restrictions round. are, and it may not be then. I mean, we don't know what the month is going to bring, but yeah. but by, it's not to that next step. By the as we eased into this, my discussions with the library were they were essentially totally following our lead. What are we told them to do they were going to do? Okay. So I don't anticipate yeah. that. that Leslie that's is true. coming in, I don't know, once a week, and I don't know why she's checked, if she's checking the box or she just comes in for a few minutes and checks everything out, makes sure everything is fine in the library, and then leaves. So. My other thing is where we are a public building, are we allowed to save the bathrooms at both? Well, there are no rules anymore. <laughs> the no. library is closed. Right, I mean the restrooms. And I only have one person in here at any one time. Okay. Um, I that suppose. Was a I don't know. I suppose if there's an emergency, we can make a decision. But I have um, Kelly is not coming in to clean right now, and we're yeah. taking care of cleaning the office and all of that. So. Until I get a big stink over it, the bathroom is locked. No pun intended. Right. We oh, don't laugh. We've had people come in and use that bathroom to clean up and I know on a regular oh. basis. Like it's a truck stop. Yeah, and we're not making appointments for <laughs> <laughs> bathroom use. So that's my policy at the moment. That sounds good. Okay. I, are we ready to move off from town office? That is how the town office is operating for right now. Okay, and uh, the procedure for the cemetery. Okay, I'm now getting lots of calls to know yeah. if the cemeteries are open, how we're handling that. A lot of that is um, up to the funeral parlors, and they have to make sure that, you know, they don't have too many people in their safe distance. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, weather, that's a the sexton's call. I know we've already had one burial because um, somebody's son was here for a funeral and was flying back to Germany because he was in the military. So they got that one in. Um, Backing up, this just occurred to me because I got a haircut today, mm -hmm. and the barber is required to keep a log, dates, telephone numbers of everybody that came in for contract, oh. contact tracing. Oh, that's a very good idea. Do you know if we're required to do that? No, but it would be good to have it anyway. Yeah, because if someone they're gonna someone's gonna knock on your door if one of our people gets sick and say, "What time was he here?" and yep. "Who else was here that day?" and yeah, and if you have a log, you just hand them the log. Yep, we're already making one so that Lorna has a you know knows who's supposed to be here. Um, the barber was basically saying, "Please sign the book, put your telephone number." Because he had today's date on there, and that he yep. was just had that log, so that just occurred to me. That's that's that's, that's a very, really good, very thing. good thing. To do. So I'll make sure that we're doing that. Um, I mean, we're keeping most of that information anyway. Just yeah, you know who's here, but so, yeah. yeah. We'll just make sure it goes into an actual binder, and we we keep it that way. Yep. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no. on the cemeteries. No. no, so we're trying to open cemeteries. Um, Again, you can't have big gatherings of people. We're trying to keep it to a minimum, but I, I'm, we're going to so have to deal. with that are posted now, it's, uh, well, that's the other it's thing. worded in a way that it's a small family gathering. Mm -hmm. Anybody that pays your specs, please do a drive-by. So they're almost doing a car parade or whatever and things like that. So I'll talk to um, Mary's Funeral Home and see if we should be... I mean, if I've if they have sign done. if they have signage or I've I've spoken to them they they're trying to make sure that they have yep. they meet all the requirements and it is an outdoor venue so 
at least our, you know, our end of it is the cemeteries are all <laughs> so. Um, and we've got a cemetery policy to go over later, and we also have the no smoking outdoor policy, which will tie into that. But for now, the sexton and the funeral home are mostly in charge of the cemeteries. Um, and we don't really, I mean, if, if there was a large funeral and there were 50, 80, 100 people there, we don't really have any enforcement. I mean, if the county sheriff came by and decided that that wasn't a proper gathering, it would be on them, not us to. Yeah. Correct. And so. I don't believe the local funeral homes would allow that to happen. No, but at the same time, I mean, they're doing all they can. Yeah. They're, they're just saying you can't have over 50. It, yep. It's kind of a lot of this. Is, like, please do it. Yeah. It's kind of like the mask. Yeah. yeah. Please wear yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, I, do you want to move to the park? Well, that I was... had some questions about the park. Um, you know, we have an email on what the park committee wants to do for, for the foreseeable future, but I had some questions in terms of the basketball court and the playground. There are I think four young men playing right now. I know. Well, I didn't know they were right now, but I saw them yesterday. Yeah, yeah. they're probably there right now. <laughs> yeah. uh. um, so, basketball is a contact sport. I mean, I suppose you could be out there playing pig, and you could social distance, but... Oh, just pull that. It looks like Sarah's, is it? No? Well, are there directives from the governor? <sighs> um, I think playgrounds are technically supposed to be closed, yeah, because... State parks closed. Yeah. Um... Again, though, it almost seems to me like, I mean, maybe we should have a sign up that yeah. says park is closed due to pandemic or coronavirus 19, whatever. But then after that, it's going to be up to the state or county sheriff to say, yeah. hey, boys, you can't be here. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes a concerned citizen would call. I get uh, that's happening a lot, depending on where you are. Yeah. Um, but it's up to the sheriff to enforce it. Yeah, we have nobody else to right. enforce right. it. We don't have to. Right. They are on the, of enforcement. And, and I haven't, I don't know about you guys, I haven't heard of any anecdotal evidence of anything like that being enforced. I think we probably all heard about the restaurant that was right. closed, but have you heard of people being told they can't sit on a park bench or, you know, I haven't, now some states are doing that. First off, Gilford, just, he's getting fined every day for having people on his property. Who, Who is? The Red Maple. Oh, the Red Maple. Oh, oh, yeah, again, that's a restaurant strategy. Yeah. Oh, his property. Not the Maples problem. Oh. Uh, hmm. So what he's doing, he's doing curbside. I'm, I'm having trouble hearing Dale, who's mumbling. Sorry, Jody. <laughs> now he's all the way across the room. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Tell him not to mumble. <laughs> so the Maple is, what they're doing is they're doing curbside. And, but he actually personally owns an acre of land beside it. Uh -huh. So people are doing curbside for food and drink. And then if they choose to, he's allowing... To be social, you can come over to my property. Oh, sit on my picnic table. Sure. Uh, which is his personal picnic table. In the town of Guilford's fire, fighting him? He was on yesterday. He's getting two fines a day. Wow. Oh, boy. And it's not, has nothing to do with his business. It's, deep, you know, it is his personal property. Huh. But Guilford's summoning him. Or is it the state? I'm not sure who is summoning him. Oh, okay. That would be interesting to know. Yeah. Um, but that kind of goes back to what we were talking about, is enforcement is... It's not, obviously it's not ours. So if the boys have got five guys playing basketball, there is none. We don't have to really worry about it. Right. I, I don't think we do. I mean, so. I, I didn't know if we could lock them. I'm going to open the gate because people are going to go fishing. I've talked to somebody already about getting the docks in. It hasn't happened yet, but um, no, it wasn't that somebody. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. My feeling is, if we're required by governor's edict to put a sign up, I'd put it up. But I wouldn't go to any great lengths to disable equipment or. No. Yeah. And people are going to do. We're going to do it on our website. You can put a thing here. I mean, on yep. the board. If rec fields officially closed. I mean. And the other thing is, I don't believe we can run a rec program anytime soon. Well, no. we don't run a rec. We don't run a rec program, I understand, but, no, I don't but we can't that. allow anybody to run a rec program on our fields anytime nope. soon. That doesn't seem like 
Not under current conditions. Yeah. If, you, if that gentleman can't have people at picnic tables on his own property, <laughs> how can you have a football You can't have kids. You have kids running around, and you, no. I mean, every everything is. <laughs> no, it's, you yeah. can't do that. Yet. And I'll tell you, there. I mean, there are a lot of people in the area with great concerns about all of this, and depending on what's going to happen in June or whatever. We're going to even have to talk about it then, whether mm -hmm. or not what we're going to be able to allow up there. So, Brady, do you, you don't have any sense that they are trying to go ahead with uh, organized ball, ball, you know? No. Uh, well, yes. the email, oh. Jason seemed to have quite the uh, plan. schedule, plan, wish list. wish list and plan for the... Uh, Summer and I think we're really on hold because I don't think we can let them run a rec program. Right. Um, all sorts of towns, uh, town managers are weighing in on listserv, and I haven't seen anyone who's allowing it yet. Right. Well, his last comment in that section about youth baseball, softball was, "We would plan to do our best to provide a safe environment for participants and fans." No. No. The safe environment is we're not having it. And, well, you know, if they want to do it. Time out. I think we have a person here. Where? At the meeting? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to check on Dale? We're going to, we're going to just take a brief recess. recess. Let me okay. pause. No, we won't hang you up. No. Okay, I'll just okay. hang. Okay. We're, it's... Uh, it's 5:25, and we're we're back in session. Um, and where were we? We were talking about the the parks, logistics, the logistics of opening the park. Um, if I put on the website that the courts are closed, the playground is closed, and the rec fields are closed until. Um, further notice. Further directive. Yeah. This was by the governor. Closed except for the boat landing. Really. Except for the boat landing because that can be opened and the road's been graded and I can open the gate and the docks, yeah. the docks will go in soon I hope. I'm, I'm working on it. Um, I don't know that there's any other real course of action. Yeah, I mean we, I'd, we'd be in violation of some sort if we... Yep. Yeah, the park is closed. Yeah, so that is what I'm going to do and I guess you guys gave me the okay to do that last time, so this yep. is basically an update. Okay. Because, um, because nobody was using the park last time. <laughs> no, no, but now all the parks are going to start. I don't yeah. know, but I don't know what Dex is going to do with their beach. Yeah. Mm. It'll be interesting to see. now. The the uh, the restaurant is serving food, and unlike the maple, those people are going over and they're sitting on a rock and they're eating a hamburger. Yeah. Mm. That's so town property then. It's kind of this, but so I just I think it's all about who's calling who. Right. Yeah. Uh, and there were kids using the swing sets, and there's a like a little spinny merry merry-go-round thing. There were a couple mm -hmm. kids using that, and I mean nobody. Now maybe somebody did come eventually and say you guys can't do that, um, but that's been my only. Um, you did mention the boat launch launches. I mean, do we do we have a schedule on getting those in, or wh where do we stand? I um, spoke to Seth. He said he could do it for me, but I don't believe he has done it. Okay. So if it doesn't happen in the next couple of days, I will move on to somebody else who can Definitely. get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your boat. I mean, yeah. Because boaters are going to want to use it. Yep. Right there's nothing else to do. You have people in there like to get into their camps. I mean. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anything, Jody? Anything? Nope, I'm good. Okay. That sounds all good. Um. So, uh, item six: new business. Uh, budgetary issues due to the pandemic. Okay, I um, listened in on a forum, they're calling it a class, but um, it was the town manager of Biddeford and the town manager of Brunswick, and they're trying to forecast what budgetarily this is going to mean for all of us. Um, 
The big answer is they don't really know. <laughs> um, some of the things to think about are we budgeted with our excise tax, our revenue sharing, our LRAP, and what is the state going to do when they don't have money coming in? How are they going to share with us? Do we know how, did they address how, how flexible the states is in terms of what they, they can pull back? Could they pull the entire revenue sharing if they wanted to? Do you know that? There is a formula. Um, I don't think they can pull everything, but I... And like uh, homestead exemption, their portion, can they pull that or can they... They can't completely pull it, but right now they... They changed the percentage enough so that this five, new 5,000 wasn't going to hit the towns. They could go in and say, yeah, we're not going to cover that. So that could hit us. I think what would be helpful is if MMA could provide you kind of a worst case scenario. Okay, MMA is working on it all the time. They're legislatively badgering sure. <laughs> anybody they can get a hold of. They're all the answers. And they're not getting any answers, as yeah. far as I can tell. Um, Everybody is chiming in on listserv as to what they think is going to happen. Um, well, see, all this goes into her bundle when she asks the feds to fill the bucket. Right. Mm. She's hoping the feds are going to fill the bucket. And until we know what the feds are going to do, I mean, it's all out of our pocket eventually, but what our budget's going to look like is a little scary. Um, as far as excise tax goes, I printed you... Hmm, well, the, this year and last year's excise tax for January through May. We took a hit in April. We took a big hit. But we've opened back up in the last five days. We've done over $5,000 worth see, of... Everything there, though, unlike this deal with the state, it's all in the pipeline. Correct. We, those cars didn't go away. Correct. It's all in the pipeline. Um, what those two gentlemen were worried about was whether or not people were buying new vehicles and for them it could be a 15 to 17 percent hit because they're used to people buying a lot of new vehicles and of course that first year is when you get the most the big bucket the big bucket of excise tax and i'm kind of thinking that lauren and i are trying to figure out if we can find out how many new vehicles we registered last year and compare it to this year to see if, if see if we are taking a hit there because I budgeted, uh, I budgeted. More yeah, right now than they did last year. I think so. I budgeted um, excise tax right. very close to what we got we had last year. I didn't take any decrease in that. In revenue sharing, and I also gave you a report on that. We saw it during the budget season. No, where's all right? I have it here somewhere. Here, no. Anyway, we budgeted 89000 which is the first tier of revenue sharing. And we did not count on that second tier, which was another 40000 That's the number that Paul threw out at us That's, that night. Right. So, hey, I think it's going to be this, but yeah. I bet it isn't. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not even sure that the 89 is... But we, we, but we don't know how much of the 89 hangs in the balance. You don't believe they can take it all? No. Okay. No. And I'm hoping they only take the... <laughs> right, but this is, that's what I'm getting at with worst case. If we know they can only take half of it, well, then we've got 45 yeah. grand we got to worry about. Um, well, and, it, it, and they play with it like they play with the school formula. You know, they're supposed to fund X amount of, of money for the schools, and they've been gradually in the last few years upping that, but it may take a fall again. Um, so they might change the formula and we lose that way. And then um, then it's what comes in revenue sharing. Less revenue is going to come in and so there's less to share. Right. But the moving parts for us, if, I, if I'm following you, is this revenue sharing number which we, we anticipated was 89 grand. Yep. And uh, the homestead exemption Yep. And, and how much is up at floating out there total? Do you know that? No, I haven't looked at it recently. Was it in, is it itemized on the warrant? No. Okay. No. Um, I pulled it because I was going through the homestead list and I had a, I had a number. But, do I have it right here? I do have. Mm -hmm. 
Logan Homestead. Last year, we took, um, the state sent us back 84000 Okay. And I, so I and I projected For homesteading? Yes, for homesteading. That's 84, what they... 84273 And you have that in your budget packet if you needed to look it up again. Or okay. If not, I can always send it to you. Okay. No, I haven't. So it's basically it's 175 grand that's yeah. hanging out there. Yeah. If but it, we budgeted 103. Oh. Because it was going up because they were going to, right. to right. give us a larger percentage. Right. Um, but now... I guess now we don't know what, what they're going to do. What I'm trying to get my mind around is, because some towns, if they lost those two components, they're going to have to raise the mill rate. They're going to have to go back to the town with another town meeting and say, folks, sorry, but it's another mill and a half for each one of you. I don't think we're in that situation. No, but we set the overlay fairly low because we wanted to mm. decrease it, and I Correct. think we might want to play with it, which is why I had my computer out, because we could put numbers in and and play a little and see, you know, what happens if we don't change the mill rate at all. Are we still... For the overlay, the overlay. For, for the overlay, if you... So we... I think I just let it ride. Can you let it yeah, ride? because I, uh, to me, the worst case scenario is you're coming back with a special town meeting and saying, hey, we were, we we're short a hundred grand because of the pandemic. Right. And we're going to take it out of undesignated. Right. As long as you guys approve it. And if you don't, you're, it's going to be on your so property tax. Then, yeah. Everybody else is actually in a bad situation because they don't have that, they don't have a budget yet. That's well, right. They can only use last year's numbers, though. I understand that, but as far as setting, well, well they, they do not, have their meeting. Yeah, yeah. But they don't really have an advantage over us. Yeah. Uh, so. so I don't know. I mean, you can. We could increase the overlay. That's we just right. need to know what they can do. Well, how far can they go on that one seventy five? If we if we find out that they can't take more than half of it, we're fine. I mean, with I, right. yeah. Again, with the revenue sharing, the big chunk is how much revenue actually comes into the state. They were projecting big numbers, good year, not going to get it. Mm. No. So no. we're going to get no. hit there. And then the projection is, do they play with that formula? How much do they pay, play with that formula? Same with the homestead. They ate that... They were going to eat that five thousand dollar increase by changing the percentage from up to seventy percent of homestead that we get back, but they may not do that. We won't, and we won't know for a while, I guess. That's probably the most difficult part because we won't know for a while. I think instead of hitting somebody's mill rate on not knowing, why don't we just wait and see how this goes? And if we have to go back to the people and ask for money because of it, we do. Okay, so you're saying commit. To what, we to what we said we were going to commit to. I, I, what do you think, Jerry? Uh, no, I, I, I think that's a good idea. I think go ahead with the commitment and then, then, do we know when those numbers are going to come in from the state and the homesteading and the revenue sharing? No, no. and that's why I want to know, if oh. possible, what's the worst thing they can do to us? That's, right, right. Based on that, we can scale. Yeah, we can budget ourselves. I mean, I guess the worst thing they can do is 175 grand. The whole, the, whole, the whole enchilada. Right, but 135. Brian doesn't seem to think that that's Brand. likely possible. So. But there's no way they can't, there's no way that they're going to take the whole number. I mean, uh, that we're not going to get some of that, right? <laughs> we don't know. I don't think, I don't think that's the case. Any, um, I've seen people who are trying to build budgets right now, yeah. and they're talking about some of them are talking a 30% hit. Some of them are talking a 40% hit. Somebody budgeted a 70% hit. Wow. It's all a guess. But it's all a guess. Yeah, I, I think it's all based us, on your worst. experience and right. what you think. Assume, right. it's, assume it's going to be 175. If that happens, we'll have to have a special. And right. we'll have to ask for 175 grand. But I don't think we need to, you know, next year's mill rate might be different. That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I also talked to the school. I talked to both the um, financial person and the superintendent they're having a budget committee meeting tonight they're having a the budget's going before the board next wednesday they're that's what the bookkeeper told me no next tuesday i don't think so but maybe they have tuesday night meetings right yeah anyway yeah so anyway they're not predicting a big 
raise there. In fact, they're predicting it to go down. So that number, at least, we haven't, you know, if they all of a sudden decided they were going to pass whatever. I don't oh. think their budget is going down. I think with the calculations and formulas, our percentage is going down. Which is this but very minute, that's all I'm <laughs> worried about. But, yeah, I, I hear you. The department is substantially going up. Yes. But if they don't say the budget is, is not going to go down. No, our, percent, the our percentage oh, is going is to go down. Parkman's going to get hit hard, and they have in the last three, four. Oh. I think it's came, but there's one other town, too, I think, who's getting an increase. It used to be Abbott. I think lately it's been Cambridge. Okay. Yeah. So, so that piece I'm not as worried about. Um, but, you know, they were, I, they, I'm sure that there are towns that if even if it's, it's 170 grand and, and you know for Dover and Milo and Dexter this is a much bigger number for them yeah. mm -hmm. they don't have much reserve no they're gonna have to go back and, and hike the mill rate right I don't think we need to hike the mill rate I didn't know if we wanted to play with it and get that overlay to be a little higher because we we've, we've got it at 30 which will cover abatements and and uh, early tax payments easily should but um, so are you saying we can mess with the overlay which will mess we were projecting a mill rate of but that's what we approved at town meeting correct correct so if we change yeah, it how can we change that we, no can we we have to go back and ask to change it no I think we're not we're not we can't have another meeting that's right. <laughs> so, that would be interesting. No. So those options are we we got what we got, but I think we're we're better off than good. some. So. Well, right. that, that's where we stand. Hmm. And I'm I actually I think getting the budget approved was better than not. Yes. Oh yes. So. Yeah. No question. We we locked we locked out there. We did. Have you heard about how many towns actually did get them in? I don't know if that number has been going around now. No, I don't know what the number is. I, I just see a lot of people going. I think we're both the only one. In the well, weren't many. Definitely in this area. Yeah. The following week, they were all starting right. to go, and they all yeah. got mixed. Saturday, a lot of them were having them Saturday or... Yeah, there was cancellations popping yeah. up, because the next day they were talking about it, and then it just went from there. Abbott. Yeah. Um, Dover, of course, doesn't have theirs till June anyway. I don't know what Dexter does. Um, well, they have a council. It's so, different. Yeah, the council yeah. just passes it. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Different form of government. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Monson, I don't think, had theirs either. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so, Bridie, were you proposing, were you saying to us, um, with uh, item 6, the tax commitment, were you asking us, do I go ahead with the commitment? Yeah, basically, I wanted just to get all the numbers out there. Um, uh -huh. I th I think and, we're and, okay, but and then you were talking about changing the overlay and and that. Um, but I think I agree with Mike that there's no way we can change it because wasn't that what we voted on and approved? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, but you. I I was just thinking, mm, but it's probably best to wait and see what we're missing before we. Yeah. Yeah, asking is one thing. Changing is something totally yep. different. Right. And, yep. uh, right. We may have to ask, but right. I don't and really that's think, out of our control. Yeah, we don't really want to even mm -hmm. turn the changing right. anything. But at least then, if we ask, then we're going to know what we're asking for. We're exactly. Right. That's right. Yeah. And it's not based on mismanagement, you know. Or no, it's not. Not that the money went somewhere it wasn't supposed to. It right. Was that right. So I, I think it's better to go ahead with the plan. Everybody knows what the plan is, and we yeah. all voted it as a town on it. And and then I think it's perfectly um, understandable if we have to go back to the town and say, hey, because of the pandemic, we, we need to release some more money. Yeah. You I know. don't think we have any option. I don't either. You can't have a meeting. What? Wait, um, Dale, what did you say? There is no option, technically, right. exactly. because we the can't. only way we can adjust that is if we had another meeting. Right. And, and we at can't this time, we can't. What could happen to us, just so we are all kind of noodling this, yep. uh, we could be in a position where, let's say we find out for sure we've lost our 175 grand, mm -hmm. and we 
can't have a meeting. We can't, and now we're getting to paving season, and we're 175,000 short of where we thought we were going to be. That's less road. Right. And yep. we may actually have to do less road because yep. we won't have the money. Right, we've got to just tighten our belt this year and say, well, yep. we can't do it this year because we're... But we're, we didn't spend it either. So, I mean, it's sort of like... They yeah, lost no, it. that, that, that yeah. I think that's the way you approach it. To me, that's kind of our worst case. That's right. You know, and you just think, think about it this way. We may not know the answers to that until July, August, yeah. when September. We <laughs> it's hard to believe we won't be able to have a meeting by then, but you don't know. No. Correct. No, but I'm just saying is you may not know the total effect of this right. yeah. until after paving season. Right, 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 right. So, I mean, we may have to have... Think about that. Well, and, and, and we're about to go to paving bids here. Yeah, yeah. eventually. I, I... <laughs> so we're kind of, we are a little bit locked up here because we're going to get to a point where we're going to want to commit to somebody. And, and they we, want us to, obviously. Yeah, and we might be spending money that we don't actually have. And I've emphasized that when I talk to these people. I'm and sure they're they, dealing with everybody. And they understand. Um, yeah. Oh, when you were talking to the paving company. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like, you know, I've... As well, far as road can. goes, I've got road prepped and I'm ready to go, <laughs> to go, and I've got money approved. However, I don't have that money in my pocket, so. Mm -hmm. No, and we, what's weird is we can't have a meeting and we have the money. Right. But we can't go get it. All right. I, unless there's a provision that we don't know about. Uh, because I, I never would have thought that you could pass a budget just by saying we're going to use last year's budget. But they did change the law and that you can do it. So maybe... As long as you live within the budget that was approved, you can use reserves. I have no idea, but we, we're going to want to investigate it. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, the paving should be cheap with the price of petroleum. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's more about uh, labor than uh, oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I keep asking him that, and, and uh, I was talking to uh, Lisa from Roundies, and she kept saying, you'd think the two were tied, but yeah, okay, she hasn't they noticed that... When the prices were she, up at, you know, $3.89. Yeah. They're only tied together like, when the oh, price oh. per barrel goes through the roof. That's yeah, the yeah right, exactly. Haven't exactly. we seen that disclaimer? Yeah. If petroleum goes up, then we could raise the price? Yeah. Huh. There isn't a disclaimer if it goes down. Never seen, seen that one. <laughs> It doesn't get lower than minus thirty-seven dollars a barrel. <laughs> yeah, because we're always talking about the price of petroleum being so high, yeah. and all well, that's why you know costs so much to do a mile of road, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, apparently not. Yeah. So okay, somewhere in between is the is the truth on all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're just going to move on, I think. I mean, there's not. Yeah, we're, I think we're all aware of what the moving right. parts are, and we keep our fingers crossed. Um, uh, cemetery, uh, cemetery policy. Cemetery policy. Okay. I knew last year, <laughs> after my first day on the job, that we needed a cemetery policy. Getting time to work on one was um, harder. I have sent you one version of this of these cemetery rules, and I've sent sent it to. Ethan um, at Larry Funeral Home, and he suggested some changes. I called, well, I emailed MMA. They told me there's some things I can't do, like for instance, I can't change the rate. We'd have to go to a town meeting to change the rates. Correct. They're in here because I want to talk about them and think about them for when we do put it before a town meeting. Um, Right. So, Did you send those to, to our email? Yes, I sent it a while okay. back. This Mine looks a little different because I have made um, some changes, and I kind of wanted to run it through with you guys because there are a lot of moving parts, and there may be some things that you you don't want in here. Um, okay. I talked, like I said, I talked to Ethan to make sure that it worked from a funeral director's perspective. I was trying to lay this out so everybody knew what to expect. Um, do you so, know what Friday when you sent it to us? Oh, it was weeks ago. But okay, if, I'm but, just looking it, to our email, obviously. But let me just email it to you. I just know okay. even I can't. <laughs> I'm looking for it, but I don't see it right well, off. It, 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 it's not the same one that we worked on a while back. Um, 
or is it the same one that we worked it on? It looks about? different now. Pardon me? It looks different now, but um, I have it you know, on my computer, so again, I should just be able to email it to you. Okay. We can have a policy, but the some of it, according to MMA, will have to be um, set at town meeting and more, be more like an ordinance. But I wanted policy because I, I knew we could set that and we were coming up to the season where we're going to have burials and we're going to have a lot of questions and I want to be able to say, we have a policy. This is the, this is the answer. Right. Um, Jody, just pull that one up because I'm... Okay, well, I, I saw it and then... Hang on. Yeah, if we get to a specific it, page... I, I saw it and then and then I clicked off of it and I'll, I'll find it again. Jody? Yes? If we get to a specific page that it seems like it would be helpful, I'll just, I'll take a snap of it with my phone and send it to you. Okay, sounds good. Very good. Um, so I'm curious about what MMA says we can do with a policy that you can't that needs an ordinance. One, where do they? Where's the two areas? Both they had to do with money. Oh, okay, that makes and, sense. And um, when uh, when I got a, yeah when I got approval from you guys, I was going to send it back to MMA, who said, "Hey, we'll look at it and see if there's anything else that you need to be leery or wary of." Um, All right, so I'll let you go ahead and run through this. It's your baby. Here. Okay. Purpose, you know, we keep it pretty simple. I took. A lot of this language from people who already have ordinances in place and just kind of cribbed and, and used a lot of it. But basically the purpose of this policy is to set fees for cemetery burials. That will have to be ordinance. Oh, because of fees. Yeah, because of fees. So, ah, so it has to be an ordinance. Yep, yeah, uh -huh. that, part, that part will. And we can make it an ordinance, but once you make it an ordinance, you can't change it except at voting, well, voting at a town meeting. The only thing that I'm confused about is... When we do sell these, we actually give people a deed. So how do you sell a piece of property, which is really what we're doing, and then we change the rules? Well, you kind of have to say this: these are the rules going forward. It's, yeah, it's not. And then, out. and then you deal with <laughs> you deal with the fallout of what happened before. That's what I'm saying. But instead of being a policy, that's where I was going with. Uh -huh. Really, it ought to be more of a purchase agreement. So that way there, when you're selling these plots and you're giving somebody a deed, this is your agreement today. If we change this in two years, it's going to be well, for those people going forward. Mm. Our deed is really clunky. I, and, we're going, and one of the things I have to do is rewrite it. Um, but yeah, I think you're correct in saying that well obviously this is not we're not we're not undoing we're not going to go back and charge somebody different if they if they own a plot they own a plot they've got a deed you know but one time wants to buy one next week at one time we were selling lots within a plot and six lots would fit within a plot now because um, liners and the coffins have gotten bigger the liners have gotten bigger only four four uh, people will fit in that same space but that's Full not us determining no, it is not. You know what I mean? You, you still got the same amount of land that you're going to yep. put filled the same way. It's just the way the manufacturer of services has changed their thing. That's what's changing that. Right, right. but that's some possible. cemeteries, your deed does stipulate how many can fit in that space. That's oh, yeah. what I'm I mean, worried about. That's important. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and Dexter's, I know because i got some people buried up there. If cremation has one set of rules mm -hmm. and... and Coffins have another set of rules. Mm -hmm. 
Do we well, have any sort of... In this, I no, but we're going to. We're going to. Okay, so <laughs> I get where you're going now. Yeah. So we've just... Amazing that we'd be loosey-goosey on anything like this. Okay. Yeah, so, so. That, that's what I'm... And I, I was just thinking policy because you guys can set policy. And anytime we find that something isn't working properly, I could say... Guys, this is it needs a tweak. This needs tweaking. But if it's an ordinance, I can't tweak it except sure, it's, at it's town. Clearly comes up. So, because I don't know, do we have a file somewhere with every one of these that we've solved? We have a file. Okay. It has some of them. But I mean, going forward, we would need that. This today's policy would have to go with the deed paperwork that's in the file. Which so and which is why you would which is why you give a copy to this one of this to every person it applies to you know, every deed you send going out forward. going yeah. forward. And right. you keep I, I see where Dale's going though, but you know people in, have uh, they're grandfathered hmm? yeah. in some way. But if they bought and so therefore these policies need to be dated so yep. you know when it took effect and or I don't know, maybe as you get into the body of this policy it is dated. Yep. But here's the thing, if somebody <laughs> as Dale's saying bought it twenty years ago and said, I'm gonna put six people in there and hasn't used it to date and still in his mind has six family members and they're all going in there but now there's only four oh, can go there because of the size well, of the wall. Maybe some of them will be cremated. <laughs> But maybe you so know. Like, really but is that our problem? He's got to no. deal well, with well, very I'll, I'll, I'll talk to MMA, but right? Is that Dale? Is that where you're sort of going? Yeah, that's what well, Dale's I mean, going. That and and all the rest of it. I mean, right. as you take a policy and you keep evolving it over time. Sure. That's why I don't like the policy idea. I kind of like the sales agreement idea because then it's contractual. It stays together. It stays with it. Once you keep making this as a policy. In, if you don't, I mean, you can kill all the policy, but you still, it's the same way. If I buy a, buy one today, the the agreement, the policy as it's written needs to go in the folder with my deed. Right. Because next week, if you bought one, Jody, and we change it. Right. Who's, there's no way anybody without a complete We have that problem. We have that problem. I know. And that's what I'm saying, though, is I mean, we have, have to figure out. We have an to, issue where we can't even find, somebody says, I have a deed. Like well, I can't find the jab oh, deed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh boy, yes. So they can produce. They ha have you cases where they produce the deed and you can't find our copy. No, or you can't find the yeah, deed. That's yet. That they, yeah, we sold to them. But here's the thing: people don't. You can take these deeds and have them registered at the registry. People don't do it. Why don't we mandate that? Mm -hmm. That's in there too. Okay. Well, I didn't mandate it, but I said for an extra twenty-five bucks, we would take care of that for them, which me covers the cost of which means the paperwork. Well, if they wanted to do it for themselves, it would cost them twenty-three. If we do it, it costs twenty-five. Well, they don't, don't give it an option. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't give them the option. Yeah. Well, but I did see one. Or ordinance. I did see one ordinance <laughs> that said. Yeah. This, well, that would be the question. Yeah, this is this is the fee. And we will be registering this at the... Correct. We yes. include it in right. our fee. Correct. Right. But that's going to be an ordinance. Because yeah. you're messing with money now. No, right. I don't think it's because it's clerical. It's not part of the sale. That would be, that'd be well, how I would ask that. I mean, this I mean, is... We're not changing well, we the, need new numbers. We, we don't have... We need it's like pricing. closing fees. Those are the closing fees of, of selling this piece of land. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's all cool, but I'm not sure we can change fees, is what Brody was saying earlier. Uh, yeah. Fees be require an ordinance. Oh, uh, no. We list our fees. Yeah, so we don't have an ordinance, do we? No, we, we have, have no not, ordinance. We so have we've not been collecting fees without an ordinance. Well, you've been collecting fees. The last time they changed, I think, was 2012, and it did go before a special town okay. meeting. Uh -huh. um, one of those things so that they, they just they put it went up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. when they did that, did they change the? How is that? Is it? Just one fee for everything, or is it so much for that, so much for this? It's one. All it changed was lots. A lot is 150 bucks, and every every lot is 150 bucks. If you buy a plot of four, it's 600 bucks. If you buy one lot, it's 150. If you buy two lots, it's 300. If you buy, you know, yeah, 300, 450, 600. So we don't have a closing cost fee. Like Jody was. Yeah, like the closing cost. Yeah. Like for the clerical end of this. All Not that of I know of, no. Because I mean, day, that's I mean, what you're doing just... on it. I mean, it's, it's as though you're buying, you are buying a piece of property. Right. Yes. Right. Yep. 
So if we can go through this, I know it's long. I've, it's like eight pages there. <laughs> and see what you think. Um, I've read through this whole thing, and I, I did give you my input. Yep. Um, I, the only other thing that I thought of, and I even forgot what my input was. <laughs> um, uh, I'm just you had had to do with stones and placements of them, and I oh, think, oh, oh, yes. and I think I have whether we wanted to going forward, you know, say the headstones go, yeah, and I, or either they're headstones or footstones, because I know that you had said that there's not even any standard right. where these. There supposedly is. I mean, because when I hired Bob Pensier to be the sexton, he said, "Well, you know, the stones are supposed to be to the front, you know, and that helps with laying out of." <laughs> of everything um, and I said well no it's it's probably the way it's supposed to be but we have some issues and so that should be defined then yes yes and it, but again it has to be going forward and it has to be in a spot where you haven't already buried people and there aren't already oopses mm. because mm -hmm. the oopses throw everything off and you have to move stones in order to bury people and um, Oh boy. So yeah. So anyway, I've um. So, Brady, are you proposing we go through this right now? I would like to, so that I have some idea if we're moving in the right direction, and I can send it to MMA and say, hey, you know, because cemetery season, burial season is opening oh. up, and I've got a lot of people calling me, and I really would like a standardized set of rules. So. <laughs> Do you have a sense of how many burials are going to, well, I mean, up to date, I mean, obviously through the summer, there may be more, but. We've only buried one person to date, but there is, it's. People waiting? Yeah, it's spring. We were waiting to open the okay. cemeteries because, you know, it's muddy and you don't want to. Do you know how many are waiting to be buried? No, oh, okay. I, I think um, last year we did, he did like five or six burials right off quick. Mm. And I don't think he did more than. 15 or 18 total, total. Okay. but um, we did more we did some more sales obviously um, people buying lots as well okay. and I, I'd like to get those things nailed down so that when I sell somebody something I know what I'm right no that makes sense I mean you... but even right now we can we can make it mandatory that if you buy one that you are going to record that and without changing the price, we're just going to eat the 25 bucks as part of the fee of purchasing. Good. And Seems then, like we could do that. I mean, that's not even... If, you haven't raised, if you're going to just you raise it, the price, right. we're going to basically eat the 25 bucks. Yep. And you're not talking that many to get us through a little town meeting next year and we can explain what you've done, and or what we've done, sorry, and ask, does, you know, does, do you want it to go up 25 or do you want to leave it where it's at? Well, to make an ordinance, we'd have would we have to have a um, hearing? I can't. Some of them we do, some of them we don't. I don't know on this. You normally one. have a you normally have a, a hearing, a, a workshop, or yeah, yeah, a hearing. Well, I'm not saying to have an ordinance. I'm just saying to increase the fees. Fees. Well, yeah, yeah and what and what it can come down to is um, MMA can tell me well you can put this 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 and this in place, and then. The other things, the fees, they're this, that, and the That's other things. That's going to be the. I mean, we can review this, but we don't know what we can and cannot do. Yeah. Right. And, and that, uh, I'm looking at, I think, is the second page, but I see at the bottom the purchase of burial lots. Yep. And I see that you've broken out perpetual care. Okay, so I wanted to go over that with you because you asked me um, how that worked. And I found something from MMA um, that cited the actual law, when you sell a lot, 30% of it has to go to that perpetual care trust fund. The one that we don't mm -hmm. know. Don't know how much we got, don't know what we can use for. Right. <laughs> That's never been invested. <laughs> and so, and then you can use the interest off that, and, it, and again, it is perpetual care. The rest of the money is supposed to go towards cemeteries. But if you don't have to put it in a trust fund, you can use... You can put any and all of it towards the mowing or towards, you know. Yeah, but the only thing is, we're saying that perpetual care is the mowing. Yeah, that's what, but you're never going to have enough money to cover. Never. Never. So we just, you just put the balance of it, but 
30% of it does have to go into a trust fund. The state mandates that you have to put that much into your perpetual care fund. And so, does, what does the state say that we do, can do with that perpetual care uh, trust fund? You spend the interest on... Oh, spend the interest. Yeah. You can spend the interest on perpetual care, so we can take the interest and help mow lawn. Yeah. Oh, but, sure. But the rest of the money is also supposed to go towards the upkeep of cemeteries, but you have all of it, too. The rest of the money, the 70%? The 70%. Uh -huh. we, don't, we don't sell enough plots a year to, to pay them for the mowing. No. Or, well, we can pay for the sexton, probably. Yeah. Not a bad year. Yeah. We well, what I'm it. saying, though, is if, if, you, if we did say go to the 30% rule and put the 30% in the perpetual care fund so that we may someday pull the interest off that, and we take the set the remaining seventy percent and just put that into general fund. Or you put it you put it into a cemetery reserve and you but spend it on the But that seventy percent is never going to touch the mowing mill. No, you'll sweep no. it every year. No, okay. but do you so. want to put it in the trust where you can't get at it no. at all? No, or? no, that's I would just. Does it have to be even in the reserve? Because if we just put the seventy percent in general fund, my understanding is it has to go to cemeteries. Correct, but we can sweep it. But it doesn't mean it has to go in reserve. Right, you don't have to sit in a reserve because you're you're always going to spend more than right. Always going. Right. right. Correct. Well, that's where. Correct. I mean, you're going to put it in a reserve just so you can drain it every year. Yeah. If you know you're going to do that, why not just leave yep. it in the general fund? Where you so, can show that you've spent way more than that on perpetual. Hundred yeah. percent. I mean, you're still going to do the same thing. You just don't need another reserve account. Correct. So and it's easier that way. Your single plot is two hundred dollars. One forty. Okay. Right now it's one fifty. That was. Total? Total. So that's a pretty good increase. It's a pretty good increase. I based it on what other... But your, now your new price, this the, the 140 and 60, includes the filing? What is that 60, PC? Um, perpetual, perpetual care. care. Oh, PC. She I just did it. the math on the, yeah. on the 30%. Oh, I got you. Okay. Oh, oh, I understand. So your $200 okay. price, does that okay. include got the it. deed filing with the county? I wasn't going to because I was going to make it optional, but it oh. can, uh, but it can uh, easily. Okay, that's right. Yes. So I think this should include that, don't you? I do. I think it's clean. Yeah. We, we just raised the policy that you're going to buy it. It's going to get recorded. You yeah. don't have the option anymore. It's going to happen. Right. Well, and then it doesn't get clunky. It's a service we do for you. Right. Yeah, I think. And we can do it for this amount of money. Yeah, yeah. we can. Yeah. So I... the, the only thing is right now we don't ha sell half... I said half plots. I think I've got it backwards. I think it's, I think it's a single lot and a family plot. <laughs> make sure you get that right. Yeah, I got to make sure I get that right. But, but for cremains, I'm suggesting that we can you can bury four people in a re, in a regular lot, where you would bury one body. Okay. And so that you could sell half lots, and have two cremains. The only thing to me about that is, and I agree as far as what you can fit, but think about it the other way, is if you take that row, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about what the cemetery is going to look like if you did that. Well, lots of times... I'm saying I guess it really doesn't matter, because you put four in the same spot anyway. Well, you, yeah, you, well, you, set, you set aside some spots that you're going to be cremains, and then you only allow flat stones in the cremains and so so each person would get their own flat no, stones. Saying, after I got thinking about this, yeah. if I bought a full if you bought a full I he, could have four stones. If you might bought a half, he would have two. And if you bought the next half, you'd have, have two. two. So somebody driving by would never know the difference that one's a half, one's a whole. No, and I think you should set it at first it, I was getting that in yeah. my head wrong. As long as you've set the stones properly Correct. <laughs> Which so we should be doing, be, but that's a whole other issue. Correct. Right. Correct. Um, so that's, I wanted to run that by you and see if you wanted to do half plots. I've got people calling me going, oh, you know, that's expensive, or oh, you know. But you, you actually... Uh, <clears throat> and I can't do that until we actually have a town meeting because it's a fee that... Yeah, the, I'm, we're into an area now where we, we're going to require a town vote. Yeah. If we so, need that. Yeah. yeah. But I think you're going to need that. I mean, if you want to do that. 
Yeah. Well, you, you can't even, well, I guess we could eat the registration and without a town vote. Yeah, you don't need town vote for that. Because we're not raising the money. You're not right. raising it. Right, so you say we're just now selling half lots and full lots and... Well, we're, what, we're, what we're basically doing is, for the current fee, we're gonna, now going to register you where we didn't before. So we're going to no. eat that until next town meeting? Yeah. The 25th? Yeah. Yeah, yes. I mean, if we're only talking, how many... You're yeah. only talking about six or seven people. I know, you're only talking about money. Each that we're going to sell from now till next town meeting. Okay. Ten, or, even, 10 or 12 would be a busy year. Okay. But even what you're suggesting, mm -hmm. if you... If you start selling them in half, the way you got the price structured, it's half the money. Right. So it's not costing, right. you're not changing the pricing. Right, right. You're, just, we're just, you're changing right. the stats. Right. We're just right. defining we're just a, a that smaller so amount that you can buy. Way, I mean? We really don't know. She's got to check with them. I right. think we can, but we'd have to, again, I'm just, that's kind of why I wanted to brainstorm. The only thing about that, though, is... Every time you split this up more, if we're going to eat the 25, you now you're up to, oh, yeah. now you're going to eat 50 on a, instead of Good the 25. Point. Well. Only for this year. Right. right. Correct. Yep. On the other hand, if you buy a full plot, which has four lots, I'm only going to have one deed and it's still only 25, 25. It's still at 25. So you may want to think about that if you're going to change your pricing around. But, yeah. Right. Um, have you had many people suggest or ask about a half? A couple, not not huge numbers, but um, I think we're going more towards cremains than and a lot of the driving factor in that seems to be price. Yep. So if you wanted to, you know, if you want just you and your spouse, that's a more economical way to go about it. And I don't know. Not yeah, for an exact number, but whereabouts are we? Are we at like sixty percent, seventy five percent? I'm going to say half and half. No, no, I mean as far as available full. Oh. Um, well, let's, yeah. let's think. Okay. I didn't really want to use that word for this. The French's Mills is basically full. There's a half lot there. Half plot there. That um, I think Laura's going to buy. So French's Mills is basically full. We never buried anybody in Gilman. Bailey is getting very full. We have another section, but... I hear it's a lot of ledge. So where you can bury and where you can't bury in that section is... So Bailey's yeah. nearly full. Townhouse it's got a little bit. has um, has a, a space open. Knowlton Mills has that back, has a little bit. And Jackman Corner has, in the back there, mm -hmm. a fairly good... Um, so like one thing I was going to ask is, do you want just to have... Um, residents be allowed to buy? That's a very good question. Lots of lots of places do it. Some do, some don't. Um, or, you know, they make it even more complicated. You have to live in the town or have lived in the town previously or, mm. you, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I was wondering about capacity because, you know, that's another huge cost. I mean, and once then we get full, we get a... Village, we a village we've got a chunk. But that's, to me, that's almost more yeah. where the, the half ones come in as a positive. Yep. Yeah. Your utilization. Yeah. Now, um, can we just, just one quick question, Brady. You're asking about a half single, no, you. I'm asking about half a lot. A lot would Before hold one, people. would hold one full family. Family. Family of four. No, no, would hold one full person. It's full a family barrier. plot. It's a family plot, which is four lots. It costs you the same price per lot, the even. Oh, okay. It is, I know it you is. have a on this plot. I, I looked at I it guess. so many. Yes, That's I do. That's why I'm mixed up. That's okay, I understand. I get mixed up every other time I turn around. <laughs> well, plot, this plot's a, a bigger word, a longer yep. word. Yep. And so that's the bigger piece, and then yep. the lot is the division in within. Yep. And we sell the. Oh, even if you buy a full plot, it's the same price if you bought individual lots. Right, okay. So, so right. there's no savings So they there. want to buy a half of a... Lot. A half a lot. Oh, so a lot which would only... Fit one person. Would would fit, fit one person, but they want to put remains of cremains. Two people. Of two people. Right. I want to sell half one and put two people in each half. So, right. um, so you can put like four into a single yeah. lot. Yes. How many can you get in a family? It just keeps subtracting. That would be eight. Yes. 
That's how Dex is doing it. It would be six. Be sixteen. Sixteen and applaud. Yeah. You can do yeah two per half. Yep. Two per half. Two per two per half. Yep. I'm saying we can bo we can oh, bury four I remains in I, a I lot. Um, other towns have done more than that. Some do less I mean, than that. In reality, that. you could do ten. In reality, it gets clunky because you mm -hmm. can't have it's stones. A Right. The stone is bigger than right. what you need. Correct. Your surf. So you need the space for the stone. Half is no right, big right, deal right. So that's mostly what you need the space for. Right. And, it's a great and you want it to look nice, there. and you don't want right. Yeah. Yeah. You want yeah. some yeah. regularity. Yeah. Placement of everything. But we ought to. We can't talk about it now. Obviously, we can worry about it later. But that's the other piece, I guess, is what we ought to look about is the is the pricing structure. Mm -hmm. If you you want to utilize your land and kind of push more of these half lots, make your price point more attractive mm -hmm. we can i mean i think this is going to take some thought oh, yeah. um, no but i think you're on the right track i mean yes. i put i put a lot of thought into it I, and i kept you know kept looking and seeing oh that really really needs to go in there or, oh you know like things i don't think we should allow people to plant trees anymore mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. with the roots and all that oh yeah they're a mess and we have we have to deal with them um Let's see, what else don't I? Some big things. Okay, I've got the Sexton's fees in here. He sets them. I don't. These are what I'm kind of recommending to him. Um, can we say no plastic flowers? We can. No, I, was, I was just kidding. I well, I said, I said no. Uh, <laughs> I said no. No solar lights? Um, lights well, some people, some places limit the number. Of solar lights, I've limited. The, I want to limit the number of like benches and big things that you can put on the lot. Um, mm. In fact, if you put a bench on, I think it ought to be in lieu of a stone. You, you know. It, well, I guess, yes, I guess if, you, if you had a plot well, and you utilized half of it for a bench, who cares, right? Personally, no, I don't care. But you know, people are leaving stuff out there. Like, I want to say no glass bottles because they're. A real hazard when you're mowing. If you break, if you break. I can tell you. I mean, like down at the Veterans Cemetery, you're not allowed to have any type of vase at all. If you want to actually, if you want to put flowers out in the stone, mm -hmm. you have to get their vase. They have to install it because it's a flush mount. Right. So that way, yeah, they can mow. They want uniformity. Yeah, yeah and, and a lot of... But it's also... It's, it's, it's also for of, mowing, yeah, but because... Sure, sure. He has... Mowing that stuff, and it's yeah. way easier, and... Makes it way faster, because... But everything we're talking about has a huge impact oh, on our mowing bits. Yeah. I mean, that's why you pay what you pay. It's because of how oh, clunky all this gets. I left my phone in here, because we were out in the other room. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Read through it and and those kind of things. Um, right, and just keep updating us by email when you learn what MMA tells you and yep. you know, what we can and cannot do. Um, Tournament, yeah. Yeah, and if you if you have a working copy and then you make changes, just highlight them when you send them, and yeah, then, then at least we know what has been changed that we need to look at. I'm putting everything through in blue that has been changed. Okay. So, yeah, I will do that for you. Um, I had an administration enforcement and appeal. The town shall have the right to correct any errors that may be made in making interments, disinterments, or the description, transfer, or conveyance of an interment property if caused by the town or its representatives. A decision shall be the sole discretion of the Board of Selectmen and consider the final decision. Corrective action may include but not be limited to canceling such conveyance and substituting other interment property of approximately equal value and similar location. Refunding the amount of money paid on account of said purchase. Um, in the event the error shall involve the interment of remains of any person in such property, the town shall have the right to remove or transfer such remains to the replacement location. Any other alternative as determined by the Board of Selectmen. Um, we reserve the right to adopt additional rules and regulations or to amend, alter, and repeal any rule or regulation or any portion thereof. And unfortunately, that's kind of necessary. I've had some issues. <laughs> uh, one thing I don't know. Uh, if, if, our, if going forward for the balance of this year is that we're going to pay the $25 to register all these, uh, should we vote on that? To, 
or just let Friday do it that way? It won't cost twenty five. It'll cost. No, I, I call the registry deeds. We we get a we get a discount. Okay. <laughs> because we don't have to pay the um, agent fee. The agent fee of yeah. some oh, sort. Right. Yeah. Which is us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do we want to vote on that? We can, but it's not two hundred bucks a year. I'll make a motion that for the remainder of the year until our next town meeting that we um, we will pay for the $25 registration fee uh, to the Registry of Deeds for the cemetery deeds. Oh, second. Any further discussion? Yeah. Should we say that we are going to make it mandatory to register these deeds? Oh. Well, that's why we're doing it. And make it register. You're right, yeah. make it mandatory because we, right, yeah. If we're doing it. It's not mandatory. That's it's right, automatic. we're just doing it. So it's 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 automatic. It's included. But we'll want to make sure that it ends up on the warrant next year and you know, on town in town on our meeting. That right, we, when she first said that, she just said we was gonna pay. What what we've done in the past has been if you want it or not. I yeah. just want to make sure that it's clear that we're gonna be saying We're doing this for every one of them. Hundred percent. Yeah. Going forward, it's yeah. mandatory. We are gonna record Oh, I see. It's mandatory on the on the part of the town manager to do this. Correct. I sure. understand. And, that exactly. and part of your yeah. buying it, you don't keep your that anymore. It's it's getting recorded. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. totally support that. Okay. Yep. Um, Jody, you vote. Uh, um, I vote yes. Uh, Michael votes yes. Dale votes yes. Uh, okay. Uh, on to something other than cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh. Bridie, Bridie, you're good with that for now? Yes, I'm, I'm still working on it. Um, I think I've got a good handle on it. I will send it to MMA and see if they agree. Okay. And see if they'll tell me what I can use as policy and what I have to put forward as an ordinance. I think I'd like to get approved whatever they say is good policy and then worry about the ordinance come... Yeah, you know, next winter. Sure. Um, my only thing is a question. Mm -hmm. Does other towns have it set that the cemeteries are open from May to November 30th or whatever? I mean, it's not so much the specific date, but then leave it up to the town manager? Or do they just go by that date and that's the date? They use that date. Most of them are flexible. They use a date. They Right. But so no weather place. would play a role. Weather plays a well, role. I just know you got into a few situations where exactly. would it be really better to just have a date and that's it? Well, I thought that at first. and then, But then I talked to the funeral director who wants some leeway. You know, what if you get a year where it's warm and it doesn't snow till December 15th? You know, do you want the opportunities? Why not accommodate when you can? Yeah. yeah. And so I think I put it that it was at the discretion of the sexton because he's going to dig the hole. Um, and I basically said, you know, if it snowed, it's not feasible because you can't find the, the spot. Um, I've got it in here under, I was part of, I know, part of it's under rules and you have yeah. units in the back. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, then I had to put it in under the sex. I was just looking for a way that you didn't have to deal with what you had to do last time, that's all. Well, yeah, um, let's see. Two memorials, nope, not there. Nope. It's in there. <laughs> I'll find it, but... The dates? I didn't remember dates in this. Yeah, the dates are like page three-ish, I think, four -ish. Page, you know what I mean? The, I did not see dates. It's under um, page four rules for visitors. visitors yep. Oh, okay. The top. May first yep, yep, through yep, November thirtieth. Yep, yep, um, it's state law that a person's not that dusted on cemeteries are closed. Um, oh, the other thing is, do we want leashed pets allowed in the cemetery? I don't know. I was for no dogs. Ethan thought that people in some places like to walk through cemeteries and they like to take their pet with them. I was like, well, I don't think any of ours are that. Clean up. Right. 
So, or leash pets are allowed in town cemeteries. Pet owners are responsible for cleaning up all pet waste. It could be changed instead of no dogs other than service animals. Um. Yeah, I'm, I, the no dogs sounds good to me, but. <laughs> I know. Other than service animals. Then you got people taking, you know, that don't oh, clean yeah. up after the dogs. Oh, yeah. So and then, those people aren't going to listen to the rules anyway, probably. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you do. You know right. I mean? So just say no dog. I, I mean, that's my vote. Okay. And I, yeah, I'm a dog lover, but, yeah. you know, come on. In the burials, interment, and disinterment, um, I have a... I was thinking I read something. Yeah. That's just where we're going to the other one. As a practical matter, is how the, is the... Yep, right there. There will be no winter burials, i.e. from the town the ground is frozen in the fall until the frost is out in the spring, or when the ground is snow-covered, prohibiting the locating of a specific lot. Late fall and early spring burials will be at the discretion of the sexton. If the sexton is agreeable to taking on the additional responsibility and work involved, he shall be reasonably compensated for the added time, work, and equipment which may be needed to open the grave site. Bob is going to dig most of these by hand. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> so if he were to do a late fall one, he might need to hire a piece of equipment, and you might have to to pay extra. If, so I'm trying to be accommodating, but have enough framework to say no. Right. I know. We just got to be careful because we get double dipping. So you, you know what I mean. You say it one way, say it kind of the same way somewhere else. I do. I know, and it's mostly because. I took it from 16 different places and have tried to condense it. There's one spot here in the middle that I really have to fix. Um, it has to do with the funeral home communicating with the sexton and the sexton marking where grave markers are supposed to go. Um, because if they don't, we get issues. But like Ethan wanted to say, well, if I bury them and then I provide the monument, I already know where we buried them and I know where the monument goes. and um, I don't want to have to check in and... That would be great if he was willing to take over this whole thing and you didn't have to worry about it no more. Yeah. Mm. But until he is... But, while they're out there for the burial, they can mark it. He, and the, he and the sexton can mark yeah. it and they don't have to have another conversation. They right. can... Right. You know, I, I'm all for being... I would, I would also... <laughs> agreeable, I would just but, caution yeah. about leaving it at sexton's discretion or somebody else's discretion. Yeah. I mean, you work with all of them. At the end of the day, it's your discretion. Yeah. yeah. So I I'm... just would make sure that, because you know how the buddy system works. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, uh, also just fall back to you. Uh, are we done talking about that? Or Pretty not? much. Yeah, that's... Sorry, because I can't uh, 100% hear, hear Dale all the time, So, and I know he was talking. Because <laughs> he mumbles. Um, but the third one, two, three, four, fourth one down under burials, internments, and disinterments, Getting all the way back to t talking about the two cremated remains in one grave spot space, yeah. And so that's what you're talking about. That if one that that says it can happen, yeah. And and so if one if a person buys a lot, they already can put two cremated remains. In. Oh, is not is not what we were talking about? Yeah, they they can buy a full lot and they can. But two cremated remains. They can have up to four. But, but weren't you talking about a half a lot? Yes. Would be one cremated remain? Half a lot would be two. A full lot would be four. Hey. Okay. And here's the other thing that we can think about. Some hey. cemeteries allow you to bury cremains on top of Cremate. bodies. Right. Because the bodies are buried deeper and yep. there's room to put. Yeah, and in New York City, they after they decay enough, you keep putting them on top. <laughs> yeah, so, so there are things to think about, you know. Right. In terms of. Oh boy. Yeah. So, I will keep working on that. If we want to move on to, yeah. we had a very simple smoking policy. Smoking policy written out. D. Yeah. Where is smoking policy for the park or for this? Well, we we said all outdoor. Um, now, is that, did you send that to us? Or? I'm, I'm sending it to you right now. Oh, great, thank you. Where's my copy? Right there, okay. So I've been in touch with um, 
the lady who works for a state agency who might give us free signs if we approve an outdoor policy. Um, the signs, you've seen them before. I'll show this one to the guys. It's in green, but it looks like this. But they want a no tobacco, not just a no smoking, but a no tobacco. Um, they want to, this area is tobacco free. That's interesting. Um, and I think mostly that has to do with chew oh. and some other yeah, things. Yeah, but that means you could smoke pot? Well, not according to our Paul. Because <laughs> Let's see. pot's not tobacco. Yeah. Um, so we've got it very simple. Section 1, this policy is written to protect and preserve the health, safety, and quality of life of the youth and adults that use the, San the town of Sangerville's outdoor resources. Its goal is to decrease the exposure of individuals and children in particular to secondhand smoke in their outdoor environment. Smoking is prohibited. Now see, they'd want us to change this all to tobacco hmm. and all other tobacco. Um, and it's at the following outdoor areas, playgrounds, beaches, athletic fields, gazebos, boat launches, and cemeteries. I think I've covered all our outdoor spaces. Smoking means inhaling, exhaling, burning, or carrying, or having in one's possession any lighted cigar, cigarette, pipe, weed, plant, or other combustible substance in any manner or form. Smoking includes the use of any electronic smoking device. Everyone is um, required to comply with the Town of Sangerville smoke and tobacco-free policy. The goal is to achieve voluntary compliance by educating employees, citizens, and visitors. Enforcement is viewed as a shared responsibility of all those in the Sangerville community. The foregoing provisions shall be effective immediately upon the adoption of this policy by the Board of Selectmen. Now, what she would like is us in Section 2 to change, um, and say she has language somewhere, but so that it includes all all tobacco products, chew being one of them. Mm -hmm. And in return, we get free signs. Mm. Free metal metal mm -hmm. signs to hang. Um, uh, we can, uh, I'm just wondering whether, you know, at our veterans monument there, mm -hmm. is, I mean, we, that's not, we don't make any mention of like the monument or whatever. Okay, no. let's see, well I put, I don't know whether we want to, but that's just another outdoor space that we... Well, the mon yeah, the mon hmm. Yep, I can add that. What do, you, what do you guys think? It really should be, if we're going to do it, I guess it should be all town property. Right, right. Instead of making it outdoor, make it all town property. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, because, the, you know, in front of the... Well, I know, but in the parking lots, you know, and in well, the parking lot of the town hall. We talked about this before, you guys didn't want to do that. No, because yeah. it's all... But at the very end, it basically says, please just do this, okay? It's a policy. It's not enforceable. Yeah, it's, it, we have no enforcement in that, in that case. Right. And we're going to do all this to get these free signs. I have a smoker here in the office. Oh, that's yeah, and she likes to go out to the parking lot occasionally, I'm sure. She goes out to the parking lot occasionally and... And weeds. Weeds. Yeah, I and know. at the end of the day, it's a policy that has no enforcement. Right, right. You can't, there's nothing, there's, you can't do anything about it. Right, I know. This is your policy and... As long as you're aware that... <laughs> but you could have a situation where your employee is out having a cigarette and then people in town are saying, hey, she's violating the policy. Yeah, oh, and I'm going to he probably hear it, yeah. You're right. So, and I don't really want to put her through that. And I think... Fire department does the same thing. And I think, oh, our, and I think our regular policy says you have to be without 50 feet away from a, an entrance. Honestly, this is one of the few times I'd rather have it be an ordinance. If someone came to us and said, this is important enough to me that I'd like you guys to put it on a warrant, I'd rather go that way. That's what, to me, I mean, I get it and it's great. And I'm not being negative. I mean, I'm probably we've the already worst put on anti our... smoker since I quit. But <laughs> when there is zero, I mean, we've put it on our rules as terms of no smoking down to the park. Yeah, so I think that's fine. It, um, it's just sim it's symbolic. Really. But being a policy doesn't doesn't do you any good. Free signs. Somebody's about to give you hell. They can't do anything about it. Like, All right, fine. <laughs> Free signs. <laughs> this is actually worse than the mask thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're not going to. We're, we're not, not going to finding it compelling. Okay. All right. 
Moving on. Thank you for sending that. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, but I, I back one last thing up. If if we had a groundswell of interest from citizens, I'd, I'd be open to taking it up. But I think I'd probably go the ordinance route. I would too, because then you can enforce it. Plus, you can explain to everybody that it's really not enforceable before you vote for this. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but okay. all right, we'll move on. Um, Town Manager's report, uh, item seven, office operations during the shutdown accomplishments. Okay, um, Lorna's been doing a lot of cleaning. She has consolidated and weeded out a lot of stuff. She's done a lot of shredding, and then she's done a lot of burning of said shredding. So, um, Sarah has got a database set up for me for, um, I had a Rolodex type thing. She set up a database there. She has been learning, and now since we're open again, she's coming along better with the registrations, obviously. Um, I've been going through all the old deeds, trying to figure out what we own, what we don't own, and why and how we own it. For example, I'm trying to figure out if we own that tree out there and I can get it cleaned up because that's a mess and looks a little dangerous, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure we own it. <laughs> what do you think it does if we don't? Well, it would be starboards. Let's call starboards and ask them if we can just clean it up. I could. Tell him he owns it. No, <laughs> well, I think it probably is the property line. Oh, is it? The, that line of old trees and I bet it is too. and so then we could clean it up. I've got one out here that is I know on that building's property, but it's gonna fall on mine. So I'm gonna trying to get. A, I've sent a letter to say, yeah, hey, can I can I take care of this? And I'm sure I can. Um, well, I mean, you've swerved into probably one of the biggest yep. spring issues we've yep. got. And yep. this is so, trees, 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 trees. So yeah. yeah. So uh, we've been going through. All the stuff here and trying to consolidate and um decades yeah we've done <laughs> some of the homestead stuff we did um still working on that the big one that i'd like to get started on is e911 we've never put anything in that system properly or appropriately <laughs> and it could be a really good tool mm -hmm. Have you been able to reach out to Dover and ask about their website and that system ask. that they use? I haven't asked yet. I'll, I'll call Jack. I just think it's really nice how it everything is, is all nice. incorporated into one system. And it reminds me partially of the E911 system and it reminds me partially um, the DOT has a, a map that you can do some neat... You can drill down in. Yeah, some neat things with. It's very nice. And... You know, if it doesn't cost us an arm and a leg, we might be able to do many similar things with E911. Um, I've noticed Dexter has laid some of their maps so that you know what the, which each lot, each lot looks like and um, where the, where the uh, building is on the property and um, some good things that way. So, and that's, for, well, that's a free service, but not everybody would have access to it. So. Well, good. So we have been busy. Um, I have everybody back in the office full time, whatever their hours what? previously previously were. There now working them all all here. Um, Are you getting a, a number of people making appointments to come in to see you? Oh yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> okay. There are some people. I think there's some people who just don't like not having registered vehicles. There are some people who know that they have money now and might not have it later and would like mm -hmm. to get it out of their pockets so that they don't spend it on something else. Um, mm -hmm. But we've had a real rush in the last four or five days. So. Oh, that's good. Jody, have you seen the updated door? No. Yeah, no. I'll, take, I'll take a picture of it before I leave, but uh, Jerry built a second half of plexiglass that swings over and leaves like a 10 inch gap. Whoa. So it's, it's really nice. Wow, that's excellent. Excellent. And we're probably going to keep it forever. Good, good. <laughs> well, forever. Yes. Yes. But no, good, good, excellent. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan of there. Um, 30 day notice on tax lines. We send out 30 day notices on April 8th, so that means Friday they're, they're 
done we'll, and we'll have a 10 day period to get out to verify all the information and get the liens out um, and how are you making out with that well it's a process you have to to send out the 30-day notices you only have to send out to the owner in your database so we look at trio we just send them all out mm -hmm. but to do the 30-day notices you have to send it out to every interested party Oh boy. All mortgage holders, all oh, wow. um, all people who have court attachments, all people who there's some grants out there. Um, so you actually have to do deed research to so, find out who has a lien on the property. Yeah, I'm doing all of that right now, and wow. um, holy We have about a hundred. A hundred individuals. A hundred individuals. Some of them are multiple properties. Okay. Um, some of them have actually come in this week. I started. I wanted. To work on it this weekend i only got like the first page out of three pages done i went oh <laughs> wow. so how many total parcels of property do you think we have in that oh uh, we're gonna have 70 75. wow that seems, like, that seems like a big year i don't think it was much bigger than last year because i'm using and i finally said want to print me last year's list because yeah because a lot of names are going to show up a lot of the names are going to show up and whether they had a mortgage is going to show up and then i only have to check and see if that mortgage has been discharged or not i'm going this is driving me nuts there's going to be a faster way to do it so yeah so and we wound up with nobody going to foreclosure mm. last year but these are this is different this is 30 day notice this is the first round and you right. get sure. you get the tax lien and then i think it's 18 months before you get the 45 day oh. notice and then foreclosure oh boy so um so, yeah, so, so, so this so, is i've never so. done the 30 days before i did the 45s last year and we wound up with you know no foreclosed property um, but I, I found some interesting <laughs> interesting cases i'm like what the heck but um, so I'm working on those, and we will have those out in the right time frame so that the process goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's important that all your yeah. sequencing is documented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep the cause going. Yeah, because if, yep. if you miss somebody, another, yep. they get another 30 days, and yep. it, yeah, it, it gets... I've seen that movie. <laughs> it gets clunky. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that. Um, those are the big... Projects. Uh, all right. Uh, C uh, E nine one one usage. Well, I Marilyn Roden called and was all upset because we named her camp road down on Manhattan the Pulliard Road, and she she went and got cable or dish for her house and asked them about getting it for her camp, and they said your road doesn't exist. It's not on there for E911. So she called up, and sure enough, it's not even drawn on the E911 map. When did that naming of, of the Pulliard Road happen? Well, according to Dick Bell, who's, mm -hmm. who's head of the association, mm -hmm. who his wife is, it was three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, can't, I haven't bothered to research it. I'm going to have to research how the road goes down through there and draw it into E911 and put all the addresses on. and um, So that's what I was talking about when I said we don't have a lot of stuff on E911 mm -hmm. that we're supposed to. Um, but I can't even figure out by looking at the tax map how Pulliard Road and Pump House don't interconnect, don't intersect. Apparently they don't, so I'm going to have to go down there and look. But <laughs> i got to see it to... To figure it out but yeah so we and we've got a lot of other things i was doing deed work for another gentleman and was looking for cutler way and i couldn't figure out where the heck cutler way was and it's it's a driveway off bean hill that has two addresses mm. on it um so we need to get all these things entered mm. um the other thing i wanted to tell you and yes i know this is self-serving but a gentleman came in who lives on the North Dexter Road and wanted to make sure you know that if emergency vehicle comes out to North Dexter Road in Sangerville, they're likely to end up in Parkman. <laughs> because Parkman has a North Dexter Road and Google always sends oh, people 
Um, you can't control Google. Oh, no, he can't. But he wants, he wants you, the road to be there. UPS informed us the other day that our mill is not 254 Water Street. No? It's been 254 Water Street since it was there. And if you look at the houses and everything around it, it all works right. But they have 254 Water Street being down by Prize. Oh. Mm. Or the old Prize. So, oh. so, yes, don't go by Google. Yeah. But. So, we do have some issues, and I'm hoping that while we're still partially closed, that I can have some time to work on it. But it hasn't seemed. <laughs> I may put it on put it on to Sarah or um, Lorna. or Lorna. Oh, the other thing that Sarah worked on for me is she's doing a map of the cemeteries using um, Excel. Oh. There's somebody in Ohio who figured out how to do it, gave very explicit directions. I gave her the directions and the <laughs> and said, here, give this a shot. So she's working on it. Well, that's good. But I had to have things for them to do, and those were things that we needed done. Needed done. Yeah, so. yeah. So that's my town manager's report. So we will move on to the road commissioner's report. Ta-da! Ta-da! Put your um, other hat on. Yeah, spring issues. <laughs> well, po we got the roads posted. I've had the posters, most of them removed. Um, some of the gravel roads still have posters on them. But I had Chris, I had Seth put the posters up. Chris removed them for me under my direction. Um, we had a bunch of tree issues, obviously. I had several different people out cleaning up the tree debris for me. Um, Travis Sally, Reggie Moore, Zach Herrick. Um, I've had a couple of road issues that I needed to send somebody out immediately. Zach Herrick has done both of those for me. He just checked out last night for me the Knowlton Mills Road. I got a call from Chummy saying that the water's running down the side of the road and then across it washing it out. And it's from the beaver bog. Well, trouble is, if it's a culvert, I can just get somebody to go clean out the culvert and do the road work. But it's a beaver bog that's the issue. It's not, they're protected in some. So I had to call Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. And, I, and the warden went out and he looked at the, he said, it's not the dam, although the dam is now leaking water. So probably I don't have beavers, I just have a decaying beaver dam which is now letting water flow. So it must be the one up past the cemetery? Okay, it's not the one where we're going. No. Yeah. Okay, it's the no, other one. It's the other, the other, yeah. yeah, the other one. Um, so I had Zach go look at it for me because I trust his opinion and he said um, with some ditch digging and some tree removal and a couple loads of gravel he thought we could fix it. I said well I'll put it on the list for tomorrow night and because <laughs> we've got some roads that we're going to, going to need to fix. Um, so I also had a issue out on Bean Hill. It was a dire emergency. The culvert was completely exposed. Nobody could get through. It was right after the storm so I had invalids in there who couldn't get out. I had power company who couldn't get in and I needed to get it taken care of immediately. Since it was six o'clock in the morning, I called Zach. I went out and looked to see if we had any culverts out here, what size is culverts, and then I met him out there. Not only did I meet him out there, I met a, the guy who called it in coming back from town after going to get coffee. So only half the culvert was exposed. Um, it wasn't, the, the power truck was already in there working. It wasn't the emergency that <laughs> it was made out to be. Um, and Zach took care of that one for me as, as well. But it wasn't as big a issue as it had been made out to be. Um, as far as trees, I, I called Ingstrom's to see if they could get some of the hanging ones that the other guys couldn't get, but they'd never call me back. I assume they're out straight crazy busy. But I was talking to the guy who runs the DOT in Guilford, and he was out with a truck, and so he removed three or four of them for me just because he was out with a truck and could do that. 
So I really appreciated that. Um, We've got a fair amount of work on the Princess Mills Road just yep. because I'm there and uh, some on the Sills Mills Road too. Yep. Yeah, Brockway Mills is pretty perfect. I haven't been out there, but I don't know. Yeah. Really we got an, a, 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 an old style apple tree that mm -hmm. broke in half and it's hay in the road. Now, it, you know, it's on, it definitely belongs to a property owner, yep. but I mean, it really can't be where it is. Yep. Um, now, is that something I can send Travis out to deal with, or is it something I need? I think you get, we really, I think, need some a bucket truck and a chipper. Oh. I think so. And there's well, several places where the power company have knocked stuff down. It's it's laying literally right in the ditch. And you don't yeah. want your ditch full of wood. No. Uh, now, there, you know, obviously somebody else owns that property, but we can't make them go clean the ditch out. So no. I think it's, we have to spend some money and clean up the mess. Okay. And, and and the French's Mills Road, both sides of the road, there are places that need to be done. I've got I've got one a huge popple that fell off my property and went onto my neighbor's property. Um, I'll, I'll get to it eventually, but it's really it's blocking the whole ditch. Mm -hmm. It's a full grown popple, uh, and there's several like that on that road. I will if Ingstrom's. I'll call him again. It's, he doesn't usually not call me back. I'm sure every town is. Mm. But I have a couple other tree removal people. What about Bridie Loans that took the popple down? They did such a nice job. Tucker, yeah. Um, they were further away. Oh, okay. But I will definitely call well, them. we got several days' work. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, the person yeah. could come down and yeah. work for probably a week. Yeah. It's just oh, a yeah, matter of... Definitely. <laughs> just a matter of getting them to be yeah. able to... Yeah. So what you have a list of... Well, I have a list of ones that people reported that were... They quote unquote widow makers that looked like they were going to come down into the yep, road, yep. perhaps on. There's one on, uh, if, just if you want to jump down, there's one on uh, McFeeders as well that's still hanging. Still hanging? Uh, I, yep. <laughs> I asked uh, I asked the uh, guy from the DOT. He got two down that way, so, but if there's still one there, I'll. I'll send you a report on the French's Mills Road. Okay. Uh, just a kind of an overview of what I know needs to be hit there. Okay. I honestly, I mean, I bet every single one of our roads needs okay. some attention between what's either laying in the ditch that needs to be chipped or what smacks your mirrors when you drive by. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Or what's going to take out. Tommy was complaining about Brockwood Mills. I haven't got anybody out there yet. Yes. Oh. Not Brockway, yeah. Borough. Oh, Borough's Burrow. road. Yeah. Oh. Jody, do you notice when you came in if the road, your road had been graded? No. It has not been waited. Because Zach called me and told me he'd forgotten it and he was going to get it today, so. It's like the stepchild, that road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I gave him a list and I thought we'd we'd gotten all of them, but, um, and I, it was on the list. Okay. How bad is your road, Jody? It's, the, you know, it's just at the front, the that very front beginning, piece. it's very bad. Yeah. So, um, I'll just be but, curious as but to then it gets better as, as you come, but, yeah. but the very, very beginning of it is really bad. And I was just talking to my mom when I brought her home from the hospital, and I, and I said this. I said this should have been done yesterday, just as far as you know, it, it, the the pliability of yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's getting hard quick. Yeah, yeah it is. Of course, there's snow on Saturday, so yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we might have another window to. Thank God, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we Does Zach have a big chipper? I don't. He didn't. I don't think he put it on his. Uh, I'm not sure if they do or not. He didn't put put on his uh, list of um, items. items that equipment that he owned. The um, key is whoever grinds chips, whatever they need to clean it up. It can't leave stuff yeah. in the road. Yeah, they yeah. got to chip it it's into, into their go. truck. Yeah, yeah. Into their yeah. Dump truck. Well, they can chip it into the woods. Yeah. Well, well if, yeah, as long as it ends up in the woods, we have problems with stuff ending up in the yeah. road. Okay. So. That yeah. wasn't from a chipper. I understand it's from a grinder, but but it was known to be left there. Correct. So. We can't in the ditches. Stuff in yeah. And then it makes breaks, you know, it makes some. Um... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and docks be discussed. You're working yep. on those. I'm working on it. Um, if it doesn't happen in the next couple of days, I'll move on to the next person. I've got to get. So far, I have to say that um, Herrick's has been really responsive to. It's very helpful. Um, Great. Yep. Great. Oh, and I got a compliment from. Um, <laughs> Rusty Jackson called me and was glad that the roads had been graded. 
I thought I was going to get lambasted. He's like, do you have Herrick out on the Burroughs Road grading? I'm like, yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure it's a pounding if it goes through. Yeah. 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 So anyway. All right. And then gravel roads. Gravel roads. So I gotta make um gotta make a plan on again money wise, what are we gonna hit first? Um Knowlton Mills needs that little spot done before it really washes out, so I'm gonna plan on doing that. I know the phone calls all spring were obviously the line road. Um, but I need kind of a... I like that. I wish there was somebody that could look at that line road. We've thrown so much money at that over the years. It's already way high. I mean, if mm -hmm. you if you go down through, when I was on a lot of Dover's roads, and especially on the other end, I know like a lot of our spots like that, we continue to just throw gravel on mm -hmm. and continue to have the same problem every year. Dover was actually putting like baseball size stone and that's what they were filling in a lot of that people were driving over and be pushing it down in and but it was actually getting some meat in there compared to what we got mm -hmm. i have no idea what's the right way what's the wrong way but it was, it was very clear driving down that road you saw two completely different thought processes of how you do that you yeah, see the problem is i went down after zach graded it and i'm like i don't know what they're complaining about <laughs> Yeah, it's nice <laughs> you know, it's really nice now. And so I was going to get drag Ben Roundy down there when I dragged him out to the East Sangerville Road. But it was so nice I didn't bother because I like he's not going to be able to tell me from looking at it now what what the right. answer is. Um, so I don't we have to do something. I, the, my problem is I just don't know what. Um, the other, there's a small spot on the townhouse road that kept, I kept getting calls about this spring. The Did flame is. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't complaining. But everybody who didn't have a four wheel drive was. <laughs> I was like, well, what are they living in there for? But that's just me. Um, what other road? There's a couple of spots on Anderson, but it's not atrocious. I mean. Yeah. Flanders Hill, the. Uh, I have some places where the pavement's breaking, but also down where the spring is, that got pretty nasty mm -hmm. this spring. It's kind of that's kind of the same feeling, though. We just continue to put gravel back on that. Yep. Whereas, Does anybody know um, what is his name now? Galen Costigan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Rob Haley recommended him in terms of. If I wanted somebody who to give me um, advice on what to do about a road, or somebody to go out and check and see if my contractor was doing a decent job of ditching, um, he apparently used to work for the state. Is retired, um, but I don't have his n number. Um, but we haven't been able to have meetings and have a road committee meeting or and. To help decide so um i think really as the road commissioner i just cruise them and prioritize mm -hmm. and if you want to report back to us i mean i thought the entry to brockway mills was really wanting i yep. haven't looked at it recently but it definitely needed to be pulled in and there was a lot of material there just in the wrong spot yeah i don't know if um i mentioned to zach that we'd like stuff pulled back in he said he would do what he could he didn't want to get out and mire his grater or you know go off the edge i haven't looked at brockway mills though that one was really spread out i haven't been out there oh. since he's grading oh. so yeah but like you're saying the line road we know it's a big issue what is the answer right. that's the same whatever mm -hmm. that answer is i bet it's the same as the answer for the flame sale yeah because it's so. the same scenario there's an underground spring or something there that's just I was kind of hoping this Galen Costigan might be like, well, you guys could use, use Phil Curtis or, mm -hmm. or somebody to go out and tell me mm. what you thought. But at the county level, there's nobody now? Well, the last, I don't know. I called the DOT and they were supposedly working on getting somebody, but it never happened last year, so I'm 
imagine it hasn't happened yet. So, um, I'll call the county and see. So those were the roads. Those are the big gravel roads that I'd had issues with. Okay. Um, paving. Well, I sent out um, calls for estimates back when we were budgeting, and some people gave me really generalized um, estimates, and some people gave me, well, they all gave me generalized ones, but um, Hopkins and Roundies agreed to come out and look at East Sangerville Road with me and give me an idea of what they thought ought to be done to the road. Where's my... Are you looking at the spreadsheet? I'm looking for that spreadsheet. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so, um, Hopkins came out just before we closed everything down for this virus pandemic and looked at it. He was thinking maybe before he looked at the road that we could grind things up and then just pave over it. But he looked at it and said, no, this is further gone than that and you really should do some reclaim. Um, I took Ben Roundy out sometime in the last week. He basically said the same thing. Um, he said maybe you could get away with not reclaiming full the full thing but do pieces he also talked about maybe reclaiming pieces and then putting on a skim coat and waiting for the next year and, and doing a longer stretch of paving but what i actually got for numbers as you can see here is uh, reclaim base and surface uh, they were recommending not if if money were tight not to surface i mean i know we've all said that we want to do a section finish a section but we want to do the biggest section we can um, and do it right and do it right so um hopkins is a lot more in terms of t price per ton mm -hmm. although they're they're within a penny for reclaim the reason roundies can do a better price on reclaim this year is they're working with a company out of Topsom. All he wants to do is basically reclaim work. They will do, but they now have a greater and um, Roundies does. Roundies does, so they can do the prep before the mm -hmm. reclaim, and that's allowing them to to get down on the price somewhat. Um, as you can see here, Roundies has the best mm. price per. Whoops, I got the. The numbers need to move down one slot, but for, for the um, the base, their price was seventy four. That's a dollar less than they quoted me back in January. Seventy eight is what they quoted me on the surface. Um, she also gave me a, Lisa also gave me a shim in surface price. I know that's something we probably don't want to do, and the road is probably a little too far gone to do that, but. It's, a, it's that 223, the 224. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. The interesting thing is they were, in terms of, I'd ask them for different lengths, you know. Um, so Hopkins broke it down by the mile. Um, Roundies just gave me the two-mile estimate because basically what I said to Ben is we're hoping to get a big piece of this done. Um, but Hopkins also did the two-mile breakdown, so you can see... Um, the difference in price there. Pikes just gave me a ballpark figure. Uh, Wellman's is not a bad, not too bad a price. Um, and but in B and B is about the same as Wellman's and B and B are about about the same. Um, I I didn't contact Northeast. I did contact Von Thibodeau, and they never got back to me. So I'm. A, Assuming since we didn't go with him last year and he spent a lot of time talking to me, he was... Oh, he's got, he started talking two miles, though. <coughs> you a couple know. balls, tons of law. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? What did he say? He said if you just start talking two miles of paving, a couple of dollars a oh. ton is a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
I'm inclined to lean that way. Um, to roundies? To roundies. Yeah. They also sent, I also dragged Ben down the McPeters Road. I said, hey, you know, we had all this, we had all this issues. Let's go, let's go look at it. Tell me what you think. Um, he did say that he thought it had held up really well considering it really hadn't moved. We are going to have some problems with the edges. He thought we should take some fill and dump it into a few spots. There were a couple of culverts that he thinks are too short. Now that the road is up, they don't go out far enough and that we should put extensions on them and rock around them. Um, what else did he say? Do you still want to line that this year? Yeah, I just wrote lines. Okay. Um, my price last year from Lucas was 12 cents per, um, yeah, 12 cents per foot. That's four lines. So we, I think we figured what it was, 24, 2500 yep. range. Um, ben said he was going to get me the name of a couple other stripers because he'd had good luck with them and mm -hmm. um, good prices. So I, I'll just have to remind Lisa tomorrow that. So we would do the lines after Ben does this, McPeters. I would think Tweaking. so. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 I would think so. Nice and clean. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously, he gave me a price for the extended culverts, the backfill, so a, little, a little more riprap on the culverts, um, 12005 Now, okay, so we didn't put the right length culverts in? Well, no, I guess not. Oh, we built the road too high. We, we built the road higher, and mm. so then the culverts... I see. Oh, don't it's like I a get pyramid. It, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you mean the, the culverts that go... Crosswise. Uh, okay, not the driveway culverts. No. The one by um, the one up by you, the Thomas yep. Road, and then the one by the bog. Okay, oh, I understand. Okay. We're, we're talking about. That makes sense. Um, yep. So... 12,000? Yeah. Woof. Yeah. So how available is his schedule? Where is he open? I get the feeling he's open right now. Um, I was just waiting. It's a matter of funding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Well, I'll, that that piece we could do, obviously. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be good. I think maybe I could tweak that, get it ready for your lines, and then you're done with the feeders, finally. Right, but even on East Sangerville, I mean, he's ready. Well, here's the deal. Hopkins is contracting with Dover. Roundies is contracting with Dexter. So they'd like to do it all at the same time, but Dexter is not being forthcoming with a with a time. They would like um, to be paid fairly quickly, but are willing to give us some leeway. But if they... Well, they can't pave now, but if they paved June. mid to late June, we could pay them within two to three weeks, within the month anyway. But if we wanted to reclaim, we could get them going on that and let that get settled and, and really uh, contacted. Question, I guess to me the only question is this $175,000 from the state. Well, we need that. I mean, we budgeted, we budgeted enough to do nearly two miles. So the money in theory is there. Yep. Unless they pull the rug out, of, the state pulls the rug out from underneath, and we have to kind of anticipate they might because we can't spend money we don't have. Right, you so could what about don't do the top coat. That's what I yeah. That's you, that's which is definitely a was what Roundies was suggesting. I think worst case scenario. I think Hopkins also said you know. We stopped that, that we don't have the money. We blame the whole thing. Get the base on. Sure. Yep. yep. If, July rolls around and we got that money and we're okay, then have them come back and, and finish it. But if they don't, we can either ask for more money. Correct. Oh, and, and hopefully, you know, worst case scenario, we're looking at losing half that money, not all that money. Right. right. But we'll know. Eventually, right. we're going to know. Right. <laughs> uh, so, but, but we, that's, could, we could get the um, reclaim. Yeah. Going. I I would. I would light them up. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I don't know, my reaction to the McFeeders tweak was, I thought that was a pretty good value. Yeah. Well, I think we put so much into it that we would be foolish yeah. not oh, yeah. to no, take pennies on the dollar. Take right. the last right. step yeah. and... 
Yeah. Just because it does lies. look good this spring. I everybody told me it was going to have fallen into the yeah, it did very into well into the ditch and no, that it did um, very well. And now and this really is the time you know it's, you take a project like that so you tweak it in the spring and right. really kind of put a bow on it. I yep. think it'll be yep. good. The amount of rain we no, got this great. year, if it didn't go anywhere, it probably it's easy. correct. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I was really happy when. <laughs> Totally yeah. When the uh, snowbanks, when the snowbanks disappeared and it was in no, I got all the same stuff that you know that entire road is going to fall apart. I know, yeah, no. yeah, on a daily yeah. <laughs> basis. So anyway, that's like, great. And plus, you know, the other thing, he, that's all his baby, yep. and he really wants that to work for us. Right. right. So, uh, yeah, it would be nice, as Mike yeah. says, to put a bow on it with roundies, you know, yeah. and have him finish the job, and and then as it, it is, the whole project is his. So if there is ever a little issue, it's his project. Yeah. And so he can come back and fix it. And he's been responsive to coming yeah. back and speaking with us. Yes. And, um, yes, I was very impressed with him. Well, that's worth a dollar of time right there. Yep. Um, I kind of would like to establish a working relationship that Yeah. when I said something, I know it was heard and that... I don't blame him. Somebody I mean, he wasn't shy about the fact that he wanted to do business with us. I mean, he, nope. you know, part of the reason he... Right. No, he wanted to fix it. He wanted right. to come back. He wanted right. to work with Well, I'd like want. to make a motion to um, move ahead and um, and offer around these. Um, uh, do, do we want to split it up and say, let's have him go ahead and reclaim? It, you, I'm making my motion, and I'm asking questions, too. <laughs> um, but go ahead and start, say, let's start reclaiming East Angerville. Two miles of it? Yeah, I think the sequencing that Dale discussed, we, we hold back on the top coat. Right. Because we don't know about the money. So do we want to do reclaim and base? I would find it. Do you want to find out what Roundy's in the reclaiming schedule is so you know that... I mean, I would let Roundy's... Right, sort of... Set that timeline that if we're going to reclaim, I want it to set two weeks or whatever. But right, have right, that right. be them, not us. Yep. Yeah, that's fine, but we, we've got to green light it. Yeah. Um, now, when we did when we did McFeeders, we put four inches of gravel on top of that road before they reclaimed it. Because it was so bad. We're not, we're not anticipating having to do that over there. Or has that... Nobody... He hasn't said anything about that. Neither of them said how much gravel... Um, that they want. That they want. Um, Cause that that's no small expense. No, it's not. The only part that I could think of, if any needing it, is after the corner. Yeah, when you go low lane. Fields, that little low when you're coming up that hill. That's mm. that's pretty rutted. Yep. So maybe you want to reach out and see if he wants to just look at that one more time. Okay. You know, or at least get his feedback on because yep. because he, he saw the sequencing we did last year and. All right. That, that, and I would, I mean, if that's the only piece, I would think that would be that much gravel. For the most part, that looks like a, a more substantial road. Somebody told me that was a county road at one point. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. But I mean, that's what I mean. That short section is really right. the only part that's... I think that's a piece where we just did like 500 feet a couple times because it was so bad. We just would go in there and do a little yeah. patch job. Yeah. Ben and I were talking about that and how you wind up with <laughs> all these... He bumps and dips and this and that. Oh yeah, and, yeah. No, it's... yeah. And he understands that we want to do as much as we can. At... Well, that's why you get a better deal on your per ton price because right. he right. knows he's going to bring his equipment and set it down, and I'm no. going to work it for. We also <laughs> talked about the intersection there at Flanders Hill. Yeah. And I... whether or not he thinks there probably isn't a big chunk of ledge there, and that you could put another culvert in. I think it's well worth an effort to try. I say if he can, I would green like that in a heartbeat because it's. It's a mess the way it is right now. Yeah, well, I, he got out and looked at it. It was raining, it was pouring. and So he thinks but, he can cross the Flanders Hill, put a culvert going downhill, yeah. as opposed to crossing the East Sangerville Road. Right. Well, he thinks well, he can. He didn't say can. him doing it, right? No, he didn't say him, but he... Yeah. But it's again, a weird he's getting more, culvert. It is. You, it's like a manhole. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, you know, doors would like us to do something, but... Well, we're the, that's the, been that way for over twenty years, and it's yeah. it's he's downhill from, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I would do it for the road. The road, the road itself yeah. needs to go in that direction. Yeah, no, yeah. if we could do it, I would do it. 
the only reason I thought we couldn't is it's obvious it should have been done that way in the first place. So, so I'm why, guessing they hit. Well, they said they hit. So, you know, like Chummy says they hit ledge. Sherving says they hit ledge. You know, guys that are old enough to know. Sure. But how true that is or how much ledge or, you know, we don't want to do any blasting, obviously. But nope. No, we don't. <laughs> but, you know, we, we hit ledge on McPheeters and we got through that pretty affordably. That jackhammer worked. So, yeah. I mean, yep. Yep, mm -hmm. and if you, especially if you could get somebody in there with a little bit bigger machine than what we had last time, yeah, you probably can get through there. So now's the time to do that, though. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's why I was bringing it up. Uh, you know, I'd make a couple phone calls and see what you can do. Get some numbers. See what mm -hmm. see what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, I are we? I guess we're going to be back on a meeting schedule now. We're going to keep doing so. this because we got plenty to do. And I think, Jody, you should be able to join us next time. Wait, what, what did you just say? <laughs> I think we should, we're going to be back on a meeting schedule every, oh, okay, every two yes, weeks. Oh, okay, yes, absolutely. And, yeah. yes, I was just looking at that, May 20th? Yeah. Or, or be prior to that? Uh, that sounds good for now. Okay, unless good. We and need then, I, as you yeah. said, I can, be a, yeah. I can be there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're going to get a little more texture from Rowdy. As yeah, well. yeah. Okay. But we are ready to green light that. Okay. So we don't need to go ahead and make a motion to go ahead on that. We're just going to, Bridie's going to continue to work with him. Yeah, however, we, uh, do you want to wait till she's got some more clarity and then sure. we can make, sure. know, we, can, we can meet anytime to, to pass sure. that. So. Yeah. Uh, sure. Well, because if we are going to talk about, I mean, if we're going to try to get a culvert in there, that's going to kind of change this a little bit. Yeah. We'll, well it back may or may not, but it's, you may be able to get somebody in there and do that tomorrow. I mean, well, I've but got, it was just one more piece to add to it. I've got the impression that everybody's looking for work right now. Right now. The biggest thing is, is this gravel. If he yeah. thinks he needs two miles of gravel, we got to adjust our budget. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think that we're going to, but... But he should have mentioned it if he's going to need it. We well, put nearly a mile on the field, though. So. Yep. Doing those roads. Yeah, neither neither of them did though, so I'm, okay. I'm not yeah. sure how that actually. Well, we can we can approve this pending that clarification. I mean, if, as long as it's what we see here, yeah. I'll talk to you guys. Yeah, we can have a meeting, a short meeting next yep. week if we need. Once you have some to. information, that's fine. Sure. Yeah, because this one's going to be marathon, but it's because we haven't met in a month. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, then, yeah, as a matter of fact, I just need to check on. So I just have to see if Rick fed my horses. Okay, so okay. let me just while you're doing the correspondence for the tarts and Rick. Okay. I'm going to excuse myself for a minute. That's fine. Thank you. All right. Okay, we're moving past correspondence park and rack. Okay, I. Have... I did read most of that you sent to me. Yep. Today. Um. I haven't talked to anybody from Parks and Rec since I talked to um, Inland Fisheries. And every time I call Parks and Rec... Okay. We're good. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're talking about Park and Rec and we're talking about um, the main forest service... Oh. Just keep going and I'll catch up. Okay. I'll... I know Sam. I haven't seen him. Sam Brown? Sam um, Hefner. He's the forest ranger in the Guilford area. Oh. Um. The thing I, that struck me with this, though, is um, the road. Yeah. I mean, if if we're going to go ahead with reconfiguring in a road, that that's to me is, that's the first step. Yeah. And now, that you may need the forest ranger for that. But that's really the, I guess, it would seem to me that we're looking for some input on what we can and can't do with regard to a road. Once we have our road, then we can reconfigure whatever we need to do. Walking paths will kind of feed off that. Yeah. And the planning board should be able to do that, right? I mean, it's all, we're going to be able to be able to solve and fire off the walk. Yeah, they should be able to help us with that. That's kind of the first step. And, uh, you know, I, I was surprised 
Google Earth, you can get a very nice kind of view of that. It looks like mm -hmm. there's plenty of room, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't know how many feet you can get before it gets too wet, and if yeah. it is too wet, how much bill can you bring in? But that's the to me, that's the cart before the horse thing is we've yeah. got to get that first. Okay. Um, so maybe get Jerry to go down and look at it with me. I mean, and this might be the perfect year to tackle this because it's very possible this park isn't going to be open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a great chance to really, you know, advance the ball there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Might be worth going in and actually trying to get some flagging about where that line would be off the water. Okay. Yeah. Then we'd know, you know what I mean? We could yeah. down and you could see this is what you really Caught the stream's pretty straight, but I know once you get yeah. down on the other side of it is but and, you know what we've talked about proposing uh, the new location for the town office over there, but we I mean we've just kind of thrown that around. But that if <laughs> It's, if we're going to build a road, it's now it's time to either put that on the list or take it off the list. I mean, right. we, all of that has to be kind of nailed down. Um, well, the town office aspect has to be nailed down. Yes. Right. Yes. But that's going to be a design factor over there. If, yeah, if we're going to go in that direction. Um, again, yeah. from the air, it looks like there's plenty of room over there and mm -hmm. it might look nice. Mm -hmm. um, but Jody, after you did that, uh, floor plan for the public works building. It looks like we could put three town offices over there. So. <laughs> Perfect. I did look at it again and look, well, I mean, that's changing the subject. And we're, we're getting on the, but the back part of that, that L, the boot, or what yes. you want to say, yep. of that L is, um, it's almost shed roof like, you know, it's much, much smaller. So, but whatever. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. Well, but, it is, except they did. I guess what I'm getting at is we've got a, some moving parts here that are connected. Mm. Right. And with regard to this, this uh, the park. recreation area. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I would love to see that we get the ball rolling on this okay. on this road. See what we can do, and then we can figure out what it's going to cost us. I'll try this Terry. Um, I haven't been having much luck with this Heather Siders. She's a, she was at first very responsive and then disappeared. Okay. So as far as the boat landing and things like that, that's more inland fisheries, right? Or is that Department of Conservation? I went, um, I first contacted inland fisheries. They, um, so there was no money for a road, but probably if you wanted to, to do a boat landing. Who's in charge of it, I guess, is the, the boat landing aspect. Inland fisheries, I would think. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, we have to, if we're going to move the road, that's, you have to know who's the one that's actually in charge of that, because if you're going to move it, I'm sure they've got new guidelines. They're mm -hmm. going to have to be involved. Yep. I'll contact them again. They weren't, they were, the, I can't even remember his name. It was a different name. He was from Inland Fisheries. He looked at it. He said it wasn't in their grant program, but he recommended this Heather Siders who works for Department of Ag. Well, that's what I was going next. What about soil and water? They might have different, I'll call, I'll call Dover. Because, I mean, right now, we've talked about this several times, with what we have right now, we already have a problem with water runoff. Yep. That's why, I mean, so that's another piece about moving this, is to improve that. And the Department of Ag was the one who helped with the boat launch last time, mm. in the 90s. And it's showing some wear, and uh, Inland Fishers thought maybe we could get some money there, yep. but, then I can't, but I can't get them to call back, because... The, the I mean, she, she was. Closed right now. Who's that? Who's well, that? this was before they closed. Oh, oh. She she was very responsive, oh. and then the Inland Fisher Wildlife guy came out, and he was very nice, but said he couldn't help me, but was going to talk to her, and I haven't been able to get her to answer. So, are you going through the Dover office? Nope, I was going through Augusta. 
I would start in Dover. Yeah. So see what they can do right here. Yeah. So I'll call them and conservation. I'll, I'll call Jerry and see if we can. He can explain some shoreline zoning stuff to me. Um, and then I'll call this Terry that Jason got a number four. But I don't. Not really sure what forestry is going to be able to do for you. I don't know. Well, probably not. But anyway, so I can get on on those two things. We've decided that um, I haven't called about the equipment yet, but that's something that we can definitely get on now that it's dried out a little. Last time I looked at it, it was when. It's still pretty wet in the back of that though. It was very wet when we went down to look at what trees were down and what needed to be trimmed, so I hadn't moved on that yet. I don't think you can get equipment in there yet, but as soon as we can, we can. I think we can pull all of that equipment. It was all, all needed to go but the swing set. And we weren't sure the swing set was far enough from the fence. Uh, the uh, the boat docks and porta parties that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I guess if nobody calls you back, it's hard to commit to the fifteenth. But. Mm. Right. Anything else there? I mean, the, the idea of a security camera or Wi-Fi, if we end up putting the, uh, the town office there, that's that's almost a definite. But I mean, those are all kinds of things that are way up in the air. My mother-in-law would really like you to do that. <laughs> she, she would have. To. She lives right across the road. Oh, okay. Has some issues. Well, well. <laughs> I don't see anything happening until we get. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, all the clan it's festivals, it's they're all. They're Everything's done. done. Harmony yeah. Fair? Harmony Fair? Not happening. Windsor Fair. Windsor, Windsor Fair canceled? Yes. They're late, too. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But Aren't you glad you didn't volunteer it's for the, the only fair I like to go to? <laughs> that one's good. Yeah, that's true. You have, it's because of all the planning that goes into it. Well, yeah, you have to you have can't to start down no. I mean, you just don't know what's That's going. what I mean. You can't start down that road because you don't know where you're going to... Oh, I know. I have friends that wrote on the whole mode subject. We're having weddings this summer. I'm like, are you kidding me? In fact, like, with this quarantine thing, I'm hoping to be able to rent a place on one of these lakes for next to... Well, not next to nothing, but mm -hmm. certainly should be more available. Yeah, I would say. I mean, who's going who's gonna to rent a camp for two weeks when you can't go outside? Well, right. I can't go exactly. camping until... June first because I don't have a seasonal up up north. Yeah, yeah. There's nobody up there. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. I can't ride in a golf cart with my wife. We well, yes, you a can. Golf cart? No, we have to have separate golf carts. A golf cart? Really? Why? Yes. Six feet. Yeah, I, she rides over with me, but when we get there, she has to have her own golf cart. Are you Why? kidding? Me? That's state statute. Oh. One person per cart. So oh. father and son, though you got to tell well, your boy. because you can't tell who. Well, it's who came together and so who. So you could be lying. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, but but she can go to Hanford with me. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. But I don't understand about the camping thing though. Is all the camper deals have been open because it was essential. So it was a, you could go buy one, but you can't use it. But you can't use it <laughs> unless you have a seasonal spot already, and those are hard to come by. Um, well, but a lot of the campgrounds are still closed. Did it, doesn't matter if you got a seasonal. I got friends on seasonals and they're not even allowed to go in and check the camper that's really? been there since last year. Whoa. This is so stupid. Wow. Okay. Um, moving on. I mean, it's, I really would love to press ahead with this. We need some guidance on this road thing and we've got we've to gotta press ahead with the, with the building. But that's the, those are the two biggest components of the, what's going on up there. So, uh, okay, uh, request for additional agenda items. Moving on to 11, selectmen's concerns. None. Uh, item 12, executive session. 
Do you want me to make a motion to MRSA 1, section 405A for annual evaluation of the town meeting? No, I, it, I, I don't, it's, it is under A, MSR 405A, which is a personnel matter. Okay. And, and, oh, you, oh, you and don't that's want the to motion. Do, okay, I got gotcha. you. No. Do you want me to change that motion? No, I just made it. Oh, okay. Uh, deal? Second. Second. All right, we vote. Uh, yes. It's unanimous. We're in executive session.